know, it's the second game of the year, so it's it's exciting, you know, and it really is, it becomes almost a playoff type game. McNeese State destroyed nationally ranked Grambling last week. However, they understand that a trip to Youngstown poses more problems than just facing the Penguins. They have a very uh, good home crowd. Uh, it'll be loud and noisy, and, you know, it, it'll be a great experience for our players. It's a battle between a pair of top 10 teams, next on Fox 1762. Forget about the highlights. We've got the whole game. It's the Fox 1762 YSU Penguin Football Game of the Week. It's number six versus number eight as YSU gets its first real test of the 2002 season. Hi, everyone. My name is Rob Schmidt, and in just a moment, we'll be joined by former YSU offensive lineman Todd Kolar. Now, YSU has won two of the previous three meetings against McNeese, including the Cowboys' only other trip to Youngstown in 1994. The Penguins currently ranked eighth in the nation, according to the Sports Network, after last week's season opening win against Clarion. On the other hand, McNeese State is ranked sixth in the country after an impressive win over nationally ranked Grambling a week ago. Both of these teams come in here with playoff aspirations. That's why it may, it may not get any bigger than tonight's game the rest of the way. Let's bring Todd in now to get a little further insight into tonight's matchup. And Todd, we saw YSU do some things very well against Clarion, but they made a lot of mistakes, maybe too many mistakes, to beat a team like McNeese. Definitely. Like I said last week, you, uh, make your most improvement between your first and second game, and YSU's definitely going to have to do that this week. They're facing a powerful, very powerful McNeese State uh, football program. I think cons consistency is going to be the key for Youngstown State this week. You know, like you said, they had some, some good things happening last week. They also had a lot of bad things. They yeah. need to key in on those good things and uh, hopefully get a lot more of them tonight. Well, the Cowboys' defense, very quick, very talented, led by Roderick Royal, but they faced a passing attack a week ago in Grambling much different than the running offense that YSU brings to the table. Yeah, it might take McNeese a few uh, series to get get their uh, chin straps buckled on. You know, they might not be used to this type of offense, but I think they'll adjust to it quickly, and it'll be a good game. And we expect a great game in front of a great audience here at Stambaugh Stadium. This is the premier Division I AA game in the country, and it's coming up next on Fox 1762. The Fox 1762 YSU Penguin Football Game of the Week is brought to you by Columbiana Buick Olds Cadillac Chevrolet, the Associated School Employees Credit Union, Transit Tours, Flynn's Tires, and E-Contractors, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. Travel to your favorite destinations in comfort with Transit Tours state-of-the-art motor coaches that feature VCRs, stereos, reclining seats, and footrests. Transit Tours offers day trips to many popular casinos, including Mountaineer, every Wednesday and Thursday, and Greektown in Detroit every Monday. For 15 years, Transit Tours has transported area high school and YSU sports teams to their events. They are proud to be sponsoring telecasts of local football. Call Transit Tours for your chartering needs. A hospital's reputation is its greatest asset. That's why hospitals everywhere trust in the skills of e-contractors to deliver the finest electrical construction, service, and maintenance. The professionals who save lives stake their reputation and their patients' lives on mission-critical power systems installed by e-contractors. For total electrical solutions, e-contractors, meeting demands that save lives. As a YSU student, it was so nice to have an ASCCU office right here on campus. I could withdraw money anytime I needed it and take care of all my other financial needs. Now that I've graduated from YSU, I can still belong to ASCCU and continue to take advantage of their great services. Stop by one of ASCCU's three convenient locations in Austintown, Boardman, and on the YSU campus. You'll see why the Associated School Employees Credit Union is the best place to save and the only place to borrow. Today, pennies just get in the way, so bring your pennies here. For a week at least, one penny gets you a 2002 Cadillac, an Escalade, a CTS, a DeVille, or a Seville. At Ohio's largest, Columbiana Buick Olds Cadillac Chevrolet, we were the first to claim where buying a car is all about you. One penny over invoice, zero percent financing. You'll see our claim is true. At Ohio's largest, buying a car is all about you. Get your YSU football tickets today. You can be part of the action. It's hard-hitting Penguins football. Call for tickets, 941-1YSU, or stop by the ticket office. 
It's a great year for YSU football, and you can be part of the excitement. Experience Penguins football, the tailgate party to the winning touchdown. Group rates are available. Call the ticket hotline at 330-941-1YSU and get your tickets today. This quarter of the Fox 1762 YSU Penguin Football Game of the Week is brought to you by the Honda Store. Presence felt. So YSU making its presence felt here at Stambaugh Stadium as the Penguins get set to take on McNeese State. The Cowboys hail from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Currently 1-0 on the young season, much like the Penguins. And a big early test for these two teams as they prepare for a very difficult conference schedule. Why, as you thought, as we've noted before, there's been a very rugged gateway conference. For McNeese, they belong to the Southland Conference and also a very difficult schedule to reach them once they get into the Southland. Definitely, uh, you can't discount the Southland Conference. Unfortunately, I was on the short end of a loss that we had against them in 1995, and uh, we learned a lot about the program then. Um, very similar to YSU, they build a lot of class and hard work, and they were able to succeed at it, so it's, it's going to be a good game today. Well, McNeese State has won the coin toss, and they have elected to receive. Now, once again, each of our telecasts of YSU football here on Fox 1762 are being assisted by eight students from the Youngstown State University Telecommunications Department. We want to thank them for their assistance. Well, there you got a brief look at the starting lineup. Let's first open it up for McNeese State. There's a good look at the offensive line. And they will have to protect their quarterback, Scott Pendarvis. Now, among that line, James Roden, the biggest guy, at 6'4", 296 pounds. Pendarvis, a sophomore from Walker, Louisiana. Their top running back is Vic King, a junior from Cutoff, Louisiana. And they've got two very speedy wideouts as well in D.J. Sams and Jermaine Martin. For the Penguins, well, their defense will be tested, much like it was a week ago. Matt Meckling and Guy Mazard are the tackles. Mazard had a couple of sacks last week. Martin Stakowitz, one defensive end. The two inside backers, two of the better ones that we'll see all year, John Tekak and Justin Delarose. As far as the rest of the defensive starters for Youngstown State, the outside backers, Brandon Byers and Russell Stuvance. Tona Barone and Mike Bracken will be the safeties. And the corners were tested last week. Jake Godick had a good game as far as kick returns. And Wayman Peters also made a few big hits for the Penguins. So Jake Stewart will tee it up. And we are underway. B.J. Sam with the return. YSU had a problem stopping Clarion on the opening kickoff a week ago, and Sams returns this one to the Cowboys' 38-yard line. So McNeese State will put it in play from that spot on the field. Not a good way to start the game there, Rob. Uh, we noticed that last week that Clarion had a pretty nice return, something you want to improve on, so let's hopefully uh, we'll see if YSU can get their act together early in the game here. So again, as we had remarked before, we are happy to have eight students from Youngstown State assisting us, and that includes our sideline reporter, YSU student, Melissa Mack. And she'll be joining us in just a second with an injury update for the Penguins as they enter into game number two here in 2002. First down play, give to King. Tackled by Wayman Peters at the 45-yard line, gain of seven. I think this week, Rob, we're going to see a little bit more speed from the offense, especially the linemen in the backs. Um, YSU, depending on how quickly they can adjust to that, will depend on, will reflect on how well they play today. Well, King a week ago, 18 carries, 80 yards against Grambling, including a touchdown. McNeese State had five rushing touchdowns in a 52 to 20 route. And all kinds of movement. The only problem is Jason Davis, the center of McNeese State, did not snap the ball, and the rest of the line went crazy. So our first flag of the night. That was a problem for both of these two teams in their opener, Todd. For McNeese State, they were flagged 10 times against Grambling. YSU penalized six times for 91 yards in the opener against Clarion. Yeah, I think you'll see that a lot in the first game. You have a lot of guys that are nervous. Um, 
It's the first game. You know, they've been used to practicing against each other. They're anxious to get against, to line up against someone else. So that, that's pretty uh, common. And there's a look at our officiating crew headed up by John Sullivan, the referee. Those guys will have their hands full here tonight. So after the five-yard markoff, Pendarvis the throw, fires complete. Great play. Britt Broadhead with the reception, but stopped immediately by Jake Godick. In a situation like that, there's no problem giving up the reception if you're right there to make the tackle like Jake was. How about that tackle? Last week, Broadhead had just one reception for seven yards. His opening reception here limited to only two by a great tackle courtesy of Jake Godin. Possession down here a week ago, McNeese State converted just three out of 15 on third down. Stu Vance off the corner, deflects the pass great from play. Pendarvis, and YSU's defense is held early on, and they will force the Cowboys to punt going three and out. That time, the defensive coaching staff called a nice little blitz there. They brought two of their linebackers and was able to put some, some good pressure on the quarterback there and uh, get the tip. So in to punt for McNeese State will be Jason Cook. A week ago, he punted seven times, averaging nearly 32 yards a boot. His longest kick against Grambling covered 52 yards. He will kick it to a single safety in Toner Barone. Great start for the Penguins. High snap to Cook, but he'll get it away. Uh -oh. Barone makes the grab, dropping to his knees at the 26. I didn't see the fair catch signal made, which is what a lot of the fans are complaining about because Barone was touched after grabbing that punt. Yeah, it's a little better than last week. I remember a few times um, he was having a hard time catching the ball and maybe uh, he's back on the 10-yard line. I think he's step backwards. But anyways, it was just some, just some mistakes that they want to uh, eliminate this week in the special teams, and, and hopefully they'll do that. So Colby Street will be the starting quarterback for the Penguins. That's John Schumacher in motion. He'll have to do a lot at tight end tonight. P.J. Mays, first carry of the night. Good running room out to the 34-yard line. Tackled on the play by Chris White. B.J. Mays a week ago, 165 yards rushing on 26 carries. That included a 73-yard gallop, which set up one of his two touchdowns against Clarion. Like you said earlier, Rob, McNeese State saw a lot of passing last week from Grambling. And YSU knows that. They want to come and start right off the bat and shove it down McNeese's throat and see what happens. Well, P.J. averaged over six yards a carry a week ago. His first effort of the night goes for eight. Toss sweep, B.J. Mays. Ahead to the 36, close to the first down. So the Penguins not being fancy like they were last Thursday, taught against Clarion when they came out and tried to establish something other than P.J. Mays. Tonight, the Penguins go right to their bread and butter. Yeah, exactly. They know what they have in P.J. Mays. They have one of the best running backs in the country. Um, everybody knows that. And last week, you know, they wanted to see what else they had. This time, uh, it, you know, there's no monkey business. It's time to get down and, and uh, really stick it to them. So the gain by Mays out close to the 37-yard line. They'll give him a pickup of about three, and it is good for first down. Give to Mays again. He has more running room to the outside. Ahead to the 42-yard line, pulled to the ground finally by Hadley Prince, the strong safety from Sulphur, Louisiana. Let's now head down to the sidelines. We've already talked about one of our students. Melissa Mack there with a further injury update on the YSU Penguins. Melissa? Thanks, Rob. Despite an injured left hand, senior quarterback Colby Street is starting for us tonight, which is definitely a re relief from last week's game. Also, wide receiver Gerald Burley is dressed and available, although he is still recovering from an ankle injury. Now, on the other hand, wide receiver Philip Larman will not be with us tonight because of a foot injury, and also tight end Dennis DeLugos will not be with us because of the troubled left knee. We will have week-to-week -week updates, though. Sounds like an exciting game, Rob. Well, hopefully the Penguins can overcome a few of those injuries tonight. Thank you very much, Melissa. Thank you. Well, the, the carry by Mays, though, results in no gain there, so the Penguins now face with their first possession down of the night. And a week ago, they converted 7 of 15 on third down opportunities, and here they're faced with third down from their own 42.
complete the throw for the first time. Dumps it off to Mays. Wide open. First down yardage into McNeese State Territory. Mays knocked out of bounds at the 46. Tackle made by Ryan Garrison, the junior linebacker for the Cowboys. Like I said earlier, Rob, everybody knows how good P.J. Mays is, and so McNeese is going to want to put eight or nine guys in the box. In order to stop that, you want to you open up your passing game, and if you have to use P.J. to do that too, then go right ahead. Mays a week ago did not catch a pass for the Penguins, so his first grab of the season results in a first down. Now, Colby's injured hand is not his throwing hand. It's, it's his off hand, but... Like Coach Haycock said during Tuesday's luncheon, it's the one that takes all the pressure on a snap from center. Mays again, the ball carrier. Not much doing this time around. Tyree Broden in on the stop for the Cowboys after a minimal gain of only a yard. So far in the game, Rob, they're sticking with their bread and butter play, and that's the off tackle. Uh, they have the pullback kick out the end, and they pull the guard um, down blocks on the front side, and they want to see if PJ or whoever the tailback is at the time, see if he can hit the seam. Um, they've been successful at it so far. That time they weren't. Second down for the Penguins now from their opposition's 45. 10-15 to go in the first quarter. This is YSU's opening drive of the game, and it's been impressive. Based solely on P.J. Mays. Now street to throw. Let's it loose for Matt Rycraft, but he overthrows his intended receiver, and the pass is incomplete. A week ago, Colby Street completed just three of seven for 50 yards. He did throw a touchdown and was intercepted once, but left the game in the third quarter when he had sustained that hand injury, and then Luis Gonzalez came in and, and looked impressive at times. Yes, Lewis did look impressive, but Colby's definitely your go-to mm -hmm. guy, and he knows how big a game this is, and I, you know, it would take a pretty big injury to keep him out of it this week. Now the Penguins now face with third and long from the McNeese 45. Street again to throw with time. Fires too tall for Aaron Marshall. Pass is incomplete, and Colby just let that one get away. So the Penguins will punt after a couple of first downs, and that will bring in Costa Carapetsis. A week ago, Kara Pets has punted four times, averaged just over 37 yards a boop. His longest ever against Clarion covered 44 yards. And a single safety back for McNeese State is B.J. Sams. This punt will sail over Sams' head and into the end zone for the touchback. So the net on the punt just 26 yards, despite a 46-yard effort by Kara Petsis. 9.54 to go in the opening quarter. YSU and McNeese. All even at zero. You're watching the YSU Football Game of the Week on Fox 1762. Donald's, I want a salad. Get your YSU football tickets today. You can be part of the action. It's hard-hitting Penguins football. Call for tickets, 941-1YSU, or stop by the ticket office. It's a great year for YSU football, and you can be part of the excitement. Experience Penguins football tailgate party to the winning touchdown. Group rates are available. Call the ticket hotline at 330-941-1YSU and get your tickets today. Bobby's flunking out. An F in English? And Peggy's stepping in. An A! Have a lot better guest stars. You have to tell me how you came up with that opening line. Well, well when I'm... I'm... On the next Monday King of the Hill. Monday 30 on Fox 1762. Lisa's babysitting Bart. Well, then I'll act like a baby. Ga, ga, goo, goo. And it means big trouble for little Lisa. I'd like to host an AA meeting tonight, if possible. Thousand episodes. Monday at 7 on Fox 1762. So McNeese goes right to work. First down give to Vic King. And he gets it ahead of the 29 for a pickup of 9. I think the big difference you're going to see this week. Last week they had some pretty big linemen for Clarion, um, but this week the size is there, but the speed is there also. I think as soon as uh, the, the quicker that YSU's defensive front can adjust to that speed and size, the better. Second and short for the Cowboys. For a run-oriented offense, this is perfect, and it results in a first down. Carry on the play by Luke Lawton. And he rumbles ahead over the 35. Justin Delaros, one of the guys in on the stop for the Penguins defense, but not until Lawton rumbles ahead for a gain of nearly seven. 
A week ago, he had 25 yards on a half dozen carries. Tona Barone on the stop. Russell Stuvance assisting as well. But it's a first down for the Cowboys. Their initial first down of the game. Pendarvis the throw. Fires, complete. He's got Jermaine Martin in YSU territory. Martin then thrown to the ground by Wayman Peters at the Penguins 43. I think McNeese right now has the ideal game plan. Uh, they have a, a very good rushing attack. Um, and then they're, they're, they're complementing that with a passing attack. And when you have that one-two punch like that, it's hard for the defense to make the right call. You know, when you got to guard both, it's very difficult. A gain of 21. And the ball now sits at the Penguins 43. Pendarvis a week ago completed 7 of 13, and he threw three of those completions to Martin. Back to the ground, it's Vic King. And he is down to YSU's 37 yard line. A little misdirection there. That froze YSU's defenders for a moment there when they faked a little end around and giving King a chance to slice through to the 37. Yeah, it's, it's very difficult to judge what you're going to see when there's only, you're only uh, two games into the season. Um, you know, the more tape you have on the team, the better you can prepare, um, especially since they were going against a Grambling team that is very different than a YSU team. So really, it's, it's all new to them right now. So the ball sitting inside the Penguins' 37-yard line. That's B.J. Sams in motion, but a toss back to King. TKAC has him in the backfield. John TKAC a week ago led YSU in tackles with 13. He had a couple of sacks to his credit. And he'll be an all-gateway conference selection before this season is over. I think so, Rob. He's a good one. Uh, 6'1", 235-pound senior. Uh, he has a motor that just doesn't quit. So we get a look at the replay. He just snuck in right behind our offensive line. Another tackle for loss, courtesy of John Tekak. He had four of them last week. Possession down here from the YSU 38. Pendarvis out of the shotgun. Fires, has his man, pass caught by Britt Broadhead. He takes it to the YSU 25-yard line. Broadhead has doubled his receiving output from last week. That's his second grab of the night and results in a big first down for McNeese. It's very difficult to, to guard those slant patterns like that. Um, they're quick hitting. It's hard to get pressure on them. Um, just a good-looking execution uh, on the part of McNeese State. Scott Thiessen with the tackle defensively, but not until. It's a 13-yard pickup and a gain. Down to the YSU 25. Seven minutes to go in the opening quarter. Give this time to Sams on that end around. Has some room. Cutting back across the grain. Got one guy to beat, and he's going to get in. Touchdown, McNeese State. Mike Bracken was the last line of defense, and he couldn't grab B.J. Sams who runs in for his first rushing touchdown of the year. A week ago, he had one carry against Grambling for a dozen yards. This good one for 25 yards and a touchdown. You have to give a lot of credit to the McNeese State coaching staff. Uh, they kept YSU's defense on their heels this entire drive, mixing up the pass and the run. So the extra point to come, courtesy of John Marino, who was five of six on PATs last week, had a field goal to his credit as well. Extra point here is good, and with 6.48 to go in period number one, YSU is going to have to come from behind for the first time this year. The Penguins find themselves trailing by a count of 7 to nothing. Well, as you can see, a good following from Lake Charles, Louisiana, following McNeese State to Stambaugh Stadium. And right now the Cowboys fans very happy because their team has marched 80 yards in seven plays. With B.J. Sams going the final 25 yards on an end around, and McNeese State has grabbed the early 7 to nothing advantage. Hopefully, Wise, you can get a, a nice kickoff return here, get something started. Jake Godick and Darius Peterson back deep awaiting the kick. It'll be fielded by Godick at the 5. Popped out of bounds at around the 24-yard line by Roy Farias. YSU's offense will come back out. First down and 10. Right about the same spot where they opened up their first drive of the night. Here's a look at the touchdown again. Begin with Martin Stackwitz. Missed the tackle. Tona Barone missed there. 
Jake Godick missed. And Mike Bracken will miss right here. And that will not make the coaching staff happy. Not at all. It's like a two tight end formation for YSU. That's Roberts and Schumacher at tight end. But a give to P.J. Mays. Gain of one. Now is going to have to show that they can throw the ball or they're going to have to run up against an eight and nine man front on every down. Definitely. Unfortunately, YSU, uh, they stick to the same game plan pretty much for the past few years, and that's they like to run off tackle. So even though McNeese might not have a lot of tapes of them this season, they know what, what YSU football has is, is, uh, been successful with. And you know, it looks like they're able to stop it right now. And last week, McNeese's defense allowed minus seven yards rushing to Grambling. But keep in mind, Grambling likes to throw the ball a lot more than YSU does. And Grambling through for over 200 yards a week ago. So that number a little deceiving, but still they have a strong and quick defense at McNeese. Option. Toss to P.J. Mays. Strung out nicely. Mays goes down at the 28-yard line. Like you said, Rob, it's a very fast defense. I think it's going to be difficult for, for YSU to get on the edge like they just tried there. And Roderick Royal, number 52, is one of the guys in on the stop along with number 25, Ashiel Fairchild. But Royal is the transfer from the University of Florida. Florida. He was the Southland Conference Defensive Player of the Week for the game against Grambling. He is a good one. He is, definitely. They have a very good history of, of excellent linebackers. Now YSU, one of two on third down opportunities during their opening drive of the game, faced with a third down situation here. Mays goes in motion. Street to throw. Fairchild in first. He disrupted the thing. And then after that, it was Jimmy Abram who gets credit for the sack. As Street the crash and burn at his own 21. And YSU will have to punt the ball away. Just clinic football right now for McNeese State. They stop the run um, efficiently. It makes it hard when you know you have to pass. They can, the defensive line can tee off. They can blitz. They can, you know, it's like playing a, a video game for them right now. now. First punt of the night by Kara Petz has covered 45 yards. Had a nut, a net though, about 35, 36, because it went into the end zone. This one will hold up for Sams. He'll make the catch at his own 45. Sams knocked out of bounds at the 39 of YSU by John Tcat. Excellent field position for McNeese State. Now, last week, Sams averaged almost 20 yards per punt return. Easy to see why. He's got good quicks. And now the Cowboys with outstanding starting field position. Well, the YSU Penguins are back in action at Stambaugh Stadium Saturday, October 5th, when they will host Indiana State at 7 o'clock. You can call the YSU ticket office to reserve your game tickets at 330-941-1YSU. First down give to Jacob Prim, his first carry of the night. YSU there in force to stop Prim, who a week ago had a dozen carries against Grambling for 61 yards and a touchdown. But not much success here, thanks in part to John Tkak and Justin Delarose. Yeah. Early in the game right now, Rob, with the offense struggling as it is, you really need your defense to step it up like they did that play. Um, they got their work cut out for them. With McNeese, they have some pretty good field position, but right now they really need to buckle down and get, to get it done. So a loss of one inside of four minutes to go in the opening quarter. Give to Prim. Stackowitz tripped him up. Prim then falls ahead to the 35-yard line for a gain of five. But quickly, it's a third down situation now for the Cowboys. So far, I'm very impressed with this McNeese State offensive line. I believe you said earlier the biggest guy was 296, which really isn't that big. Um, they're pretty lean and they can move. And that's never a good combination. I mean, the line 62304, 61279, 61332. 63290 and 64296. So they do have some big boys, but they can all move. But it's not overly tall. No. Kind of squatty, but they do their job. And now a swing pass to Prim. Stu Vance has him, but Prim fights ahead and possibly has the first down for McNeese. Good second effort may have gotten him the extra yard that he needed. Ball spotted inside the 28 of YSU, and it is a first down for the Cowboys. Got to give a lot of credit to McNeese State. They've been successful over the years, and, and this you're seeing why. Um, it'd be very intimidating to come into the to the Ice Castle right now against a, a ranked team like Youngstown State. But it looks like they're doing a good job. Now Pendarvis, four of five passing already today for 45 yards. 
and he'll throw again. Mazzard almost had him, and then Pendarvis will throw it out of bounds. His pass intended for the fullback, Darren Austelit. But now you've got a penalty flag as well. And it was a late flag. Intentional, Intentional grounding, grounding will be the call. Now that's an odd call because Austelit was there. The fullback was there even though Pendarvis had no intention of really throwing it to him. He sailed it well over his head. Yeah, I'm going to have to watch study. it again. Yeah, here we get a look at it. Good job by Mazard to force Pendarvis. Yeah, right. Good call by the officials. Pendarvis just threw it away, even though Austelit was there. He shouldn't even had that chance, though. You got to make tackles in games like this. So the ball is moved back to the 33 yard line. Give to Sams, he'll flip it right back to Jermaine Martin. Stuvance forces him inside Great and makes job. the tackle at the 28. Russell Stuvance sniffed that one out very nicely. Good job by the defense there. You know, each guy on the defense has a role. And when he tries to be a playmaker, sometimes he gets into trouble. When you play your role, um, you know you have pursuit. You know you got guys helping you. You keep contained, as I believe it's number 13. There he is, number 33. Kept contained, and there, Guy Mazar was able to come in and, and, and help out on the tackle. Yeah, there was no matchup. Pendarvis, the quarterback, tried to block Stu <laughs> and That's a mismatch any day of the week. So another possession down, quite possibly, for McNeese. They're two of three so far tonight. A vast improvement from a week ago when they converted only 20% of their third down chances. It's a big play early in the game right here, Rob. Well, last week, YSU allowed Clarion to only convert 25% of their third down, so the defense called upon again for YSU. Ben Darvis pressured by Stuvance. Gets away momentarily. Still looking. Throws. Has Martin at the Touchdown. six, and he'll get in. Touchdown, McNeese. Coach Aycock has to be feeling right now because these missed tackles are killing him. Stuvance had the quarterback in the backfield. You're right, Coach Haycock right there cannot be happy. There's a replay. There's Stu Vance ran right by him. You gotta you gotta remain under control. And Darvis had time to look too. And then finally found Jermaine Martin. And for Jermaine Martin, his first touchdown reception of the year. And for Pendarvis, it's his second touchdown pass of the season. And again, Jason Cook in for the extra point attempt, or actually John Martino. We'll try this. And it is good. 144 to go in the opening quarter. And YSU being stunned at home. They trail McNeese 14 to nothing. The Cowboys, after going three and out on their opening possession, have now come back and scored on each of their last two series. And for the YSU defense, that is their first Touchdown they have yielded through the air. They allowed Clarion to score twice on the ground a week ago, and they allowed McNeese to score on the ground earlier tonight. But that's the first time that the secondary has been victimized for a touchdown. Right now your, your senior leadership has to remain under control. It's still early in the game. You know, 14 points, it, it seems like a lot of points, but it, like I said, it's still early. Um, they need to get some sustained drives here, hopefully with the offense, get something together. Sixty-one yard drive for the Cowboys. They needed only five plays to go the distance. And it was the final 28 coming on a pass from quarterback Scott Pendarvis to Jermaine Martin. Very balanced attack on the part of McNeese State, which I wasn't expecting. I was, I was expecting to see a lot of running, yep. uh, but which we have, but we've also seen, seen some, some, good, some good passing out there too. I think more than Youngstown State expected to see. Matt Rycraft fumbles the kick picks it back up at his own 10. And Rycraft will go down at the 13. McNeese State is just firing on all cylinders, offensively, defensively, and in the special teams game. Late penalty flag has now been thrown. 134 left in the opening quarter.
Well, we didn't see much of YSU's passing game a week ago. And I think it's primarily because they rolled up 300 yards rushing against Clarion. But tonight, down two scores, Colby Street's going to have to throw. Which doesn't make me feel too good right now, Rob. Um, he looks like he's, from what I've seen early of Colby, it looks like he likes to run the ball a little more than he likes to pass. And in this type of situation uh, where they've been stopping your running game, you have to pass in order to open up that running game again. Now the penalty assessed against the Cowboys and a break for the Penguins. So now YSU will begin at their own 28-yard line after the personal foul. It looks like they're sticking to their game plan, the double tight end formation. Mays the deep back. Joe Juby the fullback. Street will there throw. Wide open Schumacher. Wide open. If he can keep his speed, he's got extra yardage. He kept his feet long enough to take the ball down to the McNeese 24-yard line where he was tackled by number 24, Keith Smith. But YSU goes to the tight end, John Schumacher, who had a 26-yard touchdown reception a week ago, and the Penguins are back in the game. Well, Rob, I got caught with my foot in my mouth, and it looks like McNeese State uh, did also. Usually when you see that two tight end formation, that's a primarily a run formation, but not this time. Excellent play calling on the part of the, the YSU offensive coaching staff. Well, I know Schumacher's going to hear it in the press room about his running ability, <laughs> but give him credit, he kept his balance He's and Schumacher boy, 200, got some yardage. 240 pounds. A well-thrown ball, though, by Colby Street. First and 10 now for the Penguins. Back to the ground. Mays stopped at the 25. Tackle registered that time by B.J. McNutt, a senior defensive tackle for McNeese, hailing from Houston, Texas. I think it's obvious early that YSU is definitely going to take a balanced attack. Just like McNeese has been using against them, looks like they're going to have to come back with uh, Adam using their own medicine. Because I still don't think McNeese respects the pass enough to back off of B.J. Mays. No, not yet. Well, Gerald Burley is in the game. Melissa talked about it. He is dressed. In, he was expected to see time, and that is number one, Gerald Burley, in motion. Good to see him in the game. Street, though, going to keep it himself. Made no bones about it when he came out of center. Nothing. And he'll only get to the line of scrimmage. Nobody fooled by the Cowboys. I think that play just, just takes a little too long to develop, or maybe Colby just isn't fast enough to run that, that type of, of running play. Now, last week, Street carried the ball eight times, or at least was credited with eight carries, but had only one yard to the good because of a couple of sacks and taking the knee and whatnot. But we have played one quarter here at Stambaugh Stadium. And the guests from Lake Charles, Louisiana, on a two-touchdown advantage over Youngstown State. It is McNeese 14 and the Penguins nothing. You're watching College Football on Fox 17, 62. McDonald's. I want a salad with lots of stuff. Just plain lettuce is never enough. I want a salad like I never had before. I want lots of chicken and I want it warm. Yeah. Give me bacon, blue cheese, and other tasty bites. I want more salad in my salad. All right. New premium salads like nothing you've had before. Cool greens, warm chicken, and lots of other tasty stuff. Yeah. Only at McDonald's. Rollin', 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 keep those tires a-rollin', rollin', 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 Flynn's Tires. Flynn's keeps you rollin' with the tires you need in stock when you need them. Name brand tires like Goodyear, Kelly, Dunlop, and more. You can count on Flynn's to keep you rollin' down the road. Flynn's Tire, where the advertised tire price is the entire price. Visit a Flynn's Tire and Auto Service Center near you. Yeah! Today, pennies just get in the way, so bring your pennies here. For a week at least, one penny gets you a 2002 Cadillac, an Escalade, a CTS, a DeVille, or a Seville. At Ohio's largest, Columbiana Buick Olds Cadillac Chevrolet, we were the first to claim where buying a car is all about you. One penny over invoice, 0% financing. You'll see our claim is true. At Ohio's largest, buying a car is all about you. Get your YSU football tickets today. You can be part of the action. It's hard-hitting Penguins football. Call for tickets, 941-1YSU, or stop by the ticket office. It's a great year for YSU football, and you can be part of the excitement. Experience Penguins football, the tailgate party to the winning touchdown. 
Group rates are available. Call the ticket hotline at 330-941-1YSU and get your tickets today. First news at 10 on Fox 1762, the Valley's only local 10 o'clock news. With weather from meteorologist John Guffrey, you'll know what to expect in the morning and be the first to know scores, see highlights, and get local sports from Rob Schmidt. The latest developments in the Valley's top stories and live late-breaking news one hour before the rest. Watch the Valley's only local 10 o'clock news with me, Gina Marinelli. First news at 10 on Fox 1762. This quarter of the Fox 1762 YSU Penguin Football Game of the Week is brought to you by Pizza Joe's. Well, we expected a good crowd here tonight at the Ice Castle, and uh, we have been indeed treated to a good crowd here tonight. You can never underestimate the crowd. Uh, I've been in a lot of big games where the crowd played a vital role in, in, the, in the wins that we had in this stadium. Third down, though, facing the Penguins from the McNeese 26. Street in trouble. He'll go down at the 30. Tackle made by Hadley Prince. And we talked about the quickness of McNeese's defense, and right there it was never more evident because they crashed in from the ends, Todd, and didn't give Colby a chance to cut back. Yeah, yeah, Colby never had a chance. Uh, as soon as he took the snap and he was making his run, uh, they were right there to get him. So now the ball's sitting on the Cowboys' 30-yard line, and Jake Stewart has been called upon to attempt a 47-yard field goal out of the hold of Luis Gonzalez. Stewart, the product of Austin Town Fitch High School, has the leg. Does he have the accuracy? No. Off to the left, and YSU fails to score. And with 14-13 to go in period number two, McNeese's lead of 14 points is still safe. I think like you mentioned earlier, Rob, they're just not intimidated by our passing game, and I don't blame them one bit. And until they are, they're going to keep loading up the box, getting eight or nine guys on there to stop our running attack. So the Cowboys will now begin at the Penguin or at their own 30-yard line after the Penguins fail to score. McNeese doesn't have as good starting uh, field position right now, so hopefully the, the defense can key on that. Yeah, the last time they had the ball, Cowboys began in YSU territory at the 39-yard line. Right now, I just think McNeese's game plan is not just to run the ball, but to dominate up front. Um, you know, they feel that those offensive linemen can control the line of scrimmage, and, and, and right now they are. So after the gain of two, just a minimal pickup. Second down now. Last week, the Cowboys averaged about four yards a carry. Rolled up 216 yards on the ground against Grambling. And overall had 359 against the Tigers. They'll go to the air here. Then Darvis, though pressured, gets rid of it the last second, trying to find his fullback Luke Lawton, who cannot hang on to the pass, and it's incomplete, but Wendell Parrish forced Pendarvis to throw the ball a little quicker than he wanted to. Yeah, yeah, he did have some time, but when he finally did find a receiver, Parrish was right there to, to break it up. It was a good look at it. He had some time. When he did find this guy, Parrish was right there. Get his big mitts on him, force him to throw a bad ball. Boy, poor job of blocking that time, though, for McNeese's offensive line because they had a couple of guys just standing around. In fact, Zach Quinlan and Jared Branny just standing around watching. Now the officials have now stepped in. And the Cowboys have taken a timeout. 13.26 to go in the half. YSU trails 14 to nothing. You're watching the Penguins game of the week here on Fox 1762. The YSU Youngstown. so nice to have an ASCCU off. And there's a good look at the quarterback for McNeese, Scott Pendarvis. Sophomore, 
6'3", 221, good size at quarterback as well. And one reason why YSU has not been able to bring him down as readily as they might want to. Big kid, he is. He's in the shotgun this time around on third down. Screen. They'll throw it complete to Marcus Trahan, but he won't get the first down. Mike Bracken in on the stop. Also, Martin Stakowitz. Trahan will go down four yards shy of the marker. McNeese tried to set up the screen to the left side that time. Luckily for YSU, it wasn't too good a pass. So he had to jump up to get it. Never really, well, finally, when he does get a hold of it, it's too late. The YSU players are there to wrap him up. He did get a few yards, but not enough for the first down. Nice job, though, by Trahan to hang on to the ball. A week ago, he had one reception for 20 yards. So in to punt is Jason Cook. His first effort of the night covered 32 yards. That's about his average so far this season. YSU put a little pressure on him. Barone will make the catch. Did not fair catch it. Nope, now you got a penalty flag. Did he make the fair catch signal? Tackled at the 32 nonetheless. The beanbag at the 27, and I think Barone did make the fair catch signal and then ran the ball, which resulted in the penalty flag. Wait for referee John Sullivan. No, it's interference. It's McNeese. The halo rule comes into effect. So McNeese did not give Barone the proper yardage to make the catch. Let's look at it again. Let's see if he at all waves for it. Nope, never waved for the ball, so that wasn't a problem. And there's the halo infraction right there. Yeah, that was kind of an iffy call there. It was number 26, Jovan Burns. He knew where he was at, and it looked like he was running to get out of that halo. Burns the guilty party. I'm not going to complain, though. We'll need every yard we can get. And for McNeese, that is their fourth penalty flag of the night. And it's a big walk-off. Takes the ball ahead to the 39. So far, the YSU coaching staff has had to learn on the run. Um, yep. Maybe they're seeing some things that they haven't seen from, from pe previous uh, seasons or from last week's tape. And uh, the sooner, sooner they can adjust and make a, the proper calls, the better. Well, they've taken the ball back to the 37 because the infraction occurred at the 27. I was wondering where they got the odd number for the penalty, but it's a 10-yard mark off, and now a toss sweep to P.J. Mays. Out ahead to the 43-yard line. Looks like a mix-up in the backfield. I don't know. That was supposed to be a reverse. It looks like P.J. almost ran into his receiver, Aaron Marshall. It's a pickup of six. Ball just beyond the Penguins' 43. Good look into the Penguins' huddle there. Inside of 12 minutes to go in the half. Street will throw. Dumps it off to DeMauro, quickly tackled on the play. Pass was partially deflected. DeMauro made the grab and then was brought down by Chris White of the Cowboys defense. Good concentration on the part of DeMauro to stick with it. The ball was tipped. Um, unfortunately, White was right there to make the tackle. If you get another look at it, big hand off to PJ. Just tried to dump it off to DeMauro. Pass partially deflected for DeMauro, his first grab of the night, second of the season. It results in a gain of one. Two tight end formation. Now from the 44, it's third down for YSU. From the backside, Street's in trouble. He will crash and burn at the 37. A shield Fairchild with the sack, and McNeese has once again forced YSU to punt. Well, that's why in the NFL the left tackles make all the money because most of the quarterbacks are right-handed, and they, you know, you never see when who's coming from the backside like that. That's when your your quarterback gets hurt sometimes. And Street never saw him coming. Uh, actually, that time it looked like it was an offensive tackle fault. Looks like they brought a, yeah, they brought the safety on a blitz. Kara Petsis brings down the high snap. On the run, it's B.J. Sam. Wayman Peters has him at the 37-yard line. And that's where the Cowboys will get the ball offensively. I think YSU's offense has to get something together here because it's just a matter of time before this big McNeese State offensive line wears down the YSU defensive front. 
11.09 to go. Cowboys will actually open up this series at their own 38. And last punt by Kara Petsis, 31 yards. Delayed handoff, Marcus Trahan. Ahead to the 39, minimal gain, a yard at best. Trahan a week ago, eight carries, 11 yards, and a touchdown. So he does not have a great yard per carry average. It's show there. He's not the quickest of their backs, but a serviceable back. Fake the tray hand. Pendarvis the throw. Fires. He's got uh, Jermaine Martin, but he can't make the connection. The ball was a little bit behind Martin, but I think even if it was on the on the money, uh, looked like he was, he was going to get hit there pretty good. And I think that's what YSU has to start doing. Something just like this. Make a few statements defensively with some hits. Yeah, right now, McNeese is controlling the game. You know, they've come into our house, and, and they've made the hits. They've made the plays, and it's, uh, you know, they're using YSU's game plan against them. Well, Pat Reese was the defensive back that time around for the Penguins. They'll need him to step it up a little bit. One big, of the right corners. Big third and nine here. Out of the shotgun, Pendarvis will throw. Stuvant's in. Delarose nice. is in. Pendarvis will crash and burn at his own 30. And YSU is held. And the Cowboys have to punt. That's exactly what we needed to see. This YSU defense isn't giving up, you know, they, they, they were a little bit shaky early in the game, but it looks like the coaches have made the proper adjustments. And right now, they're the only thing that's keeping YSU in this game. Here's a look at it again. The Penguins had five sacks a week ago. Delarose gets one here. Here's a look at the 6'2", 232-pound senior. He's talented. From Brownsville, PA, home of Frank Rutherford. Another former offensive lineman here at YSU. Cook to punt. Off the side of his foot, not his best effort. But he gets a decent bounce out of it, and it will roll inside the 40 to right around the 37-yard line of the Penguins, and that's where YSU will start with 9.35 to go in the half. YSU needs to do something offensively on this series, though. They've got to get on the board sooner or later, Todd. You can't go into the halftime down by two touchdowns. No, you can't. They definitely have to get something started here. The, re the rushing game just isn't isn't working right now. As good as PJ is, um, it's a team game, and right now McNeese is, is playing better team football. So YSU comes right to the line of scrimmage. It's their own 37. That's Roberts in motion. Mays Half wants to pass. throw. He's got, got Burley. Burley. Ah. He can't catch it. Gerald Burley trying to streak downfield with the halfback option pass, but the connection fails, and YSU leaves the fans wanting more. That type of play calling scares me, Rob. Um, when you throw wrinkles like that in the game, you really it's kind of a, a symbol that you're getting away from your game plan, and you know, you're really just trying anything you can to get something together. <laughs> You know, if, it if you would have made the catch and it would have been there, great, but it just scares me a little bit. And I'm not sure how much P.J. threw when he played at Youngstown East. <laughs> Wasn't a decent pass, a little too much to the inside. Maybe on a healthy ankle, Burley could run that down. Street quarterback draw ahead of the 39-yard line. Tackle registered by B.J. McNutt, number 79, for McNeese. Now you can watch the Fox 1762 YSU Game of the Week, and you'll get to hear another voice at times during the season. In fact, we held sportscaster auditions at the Canfield Fair, then picked finalists to join us in the broadcast booth. Today's guest sportscaster will be Daryl James from Brookfield. Daryl will have a chance during the second half to broadcast a series of plays with us later on. I may end up losing my job before the season's up. Street will throw on third down. Fires. Larman. Great play. Pass broken up and incomplete. Now we were
were told before the game that Larman was dressed but would not play. And I talked to offensive coordinator John Klasik who said Larman will not play. And well, there he is. He has talked the coaches into letting him play. I guess when you put him in uniform, you're open to just about anything. But boy, and he, nice he had a step on, on number 10, Rod Gulley there. Just, the ball was just a little bit underthrown. Larman had been battling blisters on his feet. That had kept him out of the opener against Clarion. Carapetsis to punt. It's his fourth punt of the evening. Nice, nice open field tackle by Jake Godick on B.J. Sams. Right, I can't emphasize it enough. Now here the special teams are stepping up, up their game right now. The defense and the special teams for YSU are looking pretty darn good. Uh, the offense has to, has to get it together here. How about that? Right at the ankles. Jake Godick got a hand out there and Sams went down. And you're exactly right, Todd, because the last four possessions, two for each team, have all resulted in punts. So the defenses have started to play a lot better. And that two touchdown lead that McNeese enjoys right now looks ever so much larger. Yeah, right now they're just it's just a battle of field position. Scott Pendarvis, the quarterback, but he will give to Vic King. He's back in the game and he gets ahead of the 38-yard line. That's a gain of eight. For Vic King, his sixth carry of the night, he's got 31 yards on the ground, and that leads all carriers for McNeese. Looks like his defense alignment, just defense overall for Weiss, he was just starting to get a little bit worn out. They've been out there for a long time. Give again to King. Bounces off the pile, but TCAC and Bracken wrap him up at the 39. A gain of a half yard. Third and short now, coming up for the Cowboys. Big third down here. Boy, you ain't kidding. Just over seven and a half minutes left in, in the in the half. Uh, Weiss, you need to stop them and get some points on the board fast. McNeese, two of six on third down opportunities tonight. Percentage-wise, it's better than they were a week ago. But if your defense is only allowing the opposition to convert 33% of the third downs, they're doing a good job. Give the lot and fumble. fumble. The football. Recovered by Tona Baron and YSU has it. So the Penguins get the takeaway. They were a minus two after last week, but it's the second fumble recovery of the year. And now YSU will begin in McNeese territory at the Cowboys 45. Well, McNeese made their first major mistake of the game with the turnover. Uh, they were running on all cylinders up to that point, and hopefully YSU can, can key in on that, make something out of, out of it. Luke Lawton fighting for the extra yard, lost the football, and there's number 31, Tona Barone, to make the recovery. It's like he recovered the ref's foot, too. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Cowboys have now fumbled it away three times, actually four times this season, three a week ago against Grambling. There's still a plus one in the turnover ratio. P.J. Mays is split out as a receiver to the right. That's at the bottom of your screen. Luis Gonzalez in at quarterback. They're going to Mays. Got and he it. caught it. Wow. At the 18-yard line, P.J. Mays makes the reception. That's a sign of a great player. He's just taking it upon himself uh, to take over the offense. Running the ball, catching the ball, whatever it takes, he's ready to step in and do it. For Mays, his second reception of the night. Luis Gonzalez has now stepped in at quarterback for the Penguins. A week ago, two of six through the air for just 18 yards, but he fires his first completion of the night, and this one's good for 27. Now from the 18. First real scoring threat of the night for the YSU Penguins. Burns fumbled the handoff. Got it right back. Nope. Uh, did not get it back. Recovered by McNeese. Cedric Lars comes up with the football, and YSU has given it right back. It looks like some type of mix-up because it wasn't a clean handoff at all. The Burns was too far away from Colby to get the handoff correctly. Well, keep in mind, Gonzalez is now in there at quarterback. Yeah, Gonzalez and is in. And you're right. even worse. They just never got close enough to make the exchange. And there you see Burns running again. Yeah, looked like he might have recovered it, but he was going after it. And that's when Cedric Lars, the sophomore strong safety for McNeese, came up with the recovery, and the Cowboys have dodged a bullet. So 
they'll begin now at the 17. 6.38 to go in the half. Give to Vic King. Out ahead of the 25, close to the first down. Right now, it's not a good feeling for the offense. I mean, when your defense is playing as, as good as they are, and you feel like you're the, the, the weak link right now that, that's keeping the team from, from doing some good things, uh, it's just really a bad feeling, and, and hopefully that'll motivate the YSU offense to get their act together. Well, YSU has now fumbled the ball away three times this season. They're back to a minus two in the turnover ratio, and that does not sit easy with any coach. Right now, McNeese and their offensive line is just out muscling the, the YSU defensive front. And I really can't blame them because they've been out there a long time and they're probably getting pretty tired. Now the run by King ahead to the 32-yard line. Good for a first down. That was a gain of seven more for Vic King. He's got 53 yards rushing tonight on nine carries. Now King this time finds it going a little bit tougher. YSU able to knife through very quickly. They do a nice job defensively, courtesy of Guy Mazard, and King will go down in the backfield at the 31, losing a yard. I think as long as it, YSU, uh, YSU's defensive coaching staff can keep, a, keep the guys fresh, keep them rotated in there, give them a chance. Hopefully they can get something together, get another turnover, or stop them here. There's still some time left in the half for YSU to score. Penn Darvis will throw. Dumps it off. The fullback makes the catch. That's Darren Austelet. A senior from Long Beach, Mississippi, makes the grab, but is quickly tackled shy of the YSU 39-yard line, short of the first down. Be another big third down for McNeese State. YSU stepped it up the last few times. Hopefully they can do it again here right now. Well, a gain of just over seven yards on that last pass play. Pendarvis is now thrown for 85 yards, having completed seven of ten. He'll throw again. Right. Complete. Martin, NYSU territory, has the ball and the first down. They'll give him progress to the 47 of the Penguins. Just, just great execution on the part of McNeese State. Very quick pass. You don't have to worry about the, the pass rush um, be, being a concern when you throw the ball that fast. And right now they're just keeping the defense on their heels. They're doing a great job of calling uh, calling plays. So I give a lot of credit to the McNeese State offensive coaching staff. Doing a great job of mixing up the run and the pass. Well, a gain of 14 yards. Martin now with three receptions for 64 yards in the game. Pendarvis wants to throw again. Pressure. T Cat got him. Pendarvis will finally nice. crash and burn back at his own 44 yard line. Now they're going to spot him at the 45. Nonetheless, a huge loss of eight yards on the play. And there's the senior leadership that YSU so desperately needs. Definitely. Big players make big plays, and T Cat has made probably one of the bigger ones of the game right now. Oh, I hate that spot, though. I hate that spot. TCAC barely touched the quarterback at the 45. The tackle truly registered at the 42, and they give McNeese the ball at the 45. At least the ball should have been put down at the 43. Not that a fan a of that spot. Wow. Not a fan of that at all. Pendarvis will throw. Nope, going to run out of the shotgun. Back into YSU territory. Wayman Peters has him and drops him just inside the 40, close to the 39. Yeah, fatigue just has to be setting in on this YSU defensive front. You know, sometimes it becomes a guessing game, and sometimes you guess wrong. Um, this McNeese State just they're firing on all cylinders, running, passing, everything. Now that was a gain of 15 yards by Scott Pendarvis, the quarterback. That's his longest run of the year. He's impressed me so far this evening. 2:45 to go in the second quarter. Here's a look at it. He was like 10 yards downfield before anyone touched him. Yep. Now the play clock got to one, and that's when McNeese took a timeout. Stopping play with 2.33 to go in the half. 
and the Cowboys own a 14 to nothing advantage over YSU. You're watching college football on Fox 17 62. What if you... So Victor... They put in second string Luis Gonzalez. They put in second string Luis Gonzalez, right? Big third down play here. I don't know if he got it. I don't think he did. It'll be close with the forward progress. So the ball will be spotted at the 38 yard line. Vic King was the ball carrier. TCAC, there's Bracken helping out. Barone was in on the stop. YSU's defense held momentarily. And now McNeese will take another timeout to discuss this play. Well, they're going to bring the chains out. That's the stoppage. Let's now send it down to the sideline. Melissa Mack has an update on a YSU injury. Melissa? Yes, uh, we were helpful at the beginning of the game that Colby Street, our senior starting quarterback, would be okay for the game. But he has been taken out of the game due to his left hand injury. Right now, second string quarterback, Luis Gonzalez, has been put in. And that is all the uh, update that we have right now. We will be back to you as soon as we know more. Back to you, Rob. Thanks, Melissa. So again, Colby has been lifted, not so much because of a coach's decision, but again, that, that injury, that hand problem has uh, surfaced once again and is not Colby from the lineup. It's hard to have consistency, which is what YSU's lacking right now when you're shuffling quarterbacks in and out. Fourth down and one. Penn Darvis will toss it to Vic. Wow. First down and more. Play. Upended at the 15-yard line by Jake Godick, and he is injured. But a first down for McNeese on a gutsy call. I'm just really impressed with the, the calls that this McNeese State coaching staff is making. I mean, they're, they're running it down YSU's throat when they have to, and then they pull out some of these tricky little plays when they have to. Boy, that went right across the grain because everybody for YSU was going to the right. They followed the fullback, and they came back the other way to the left of the YSU defense, and Vic King with a big run and a first down. And Jake Godick was the guy who made the tackle, and he looked like he was saving his ribs after that play. Now they go back to King. Penalty YSU flag. there to snuff it out. Penalty flag down as well. Russell Stuvance in on the stop for the Penguins. Hopefully this YSU defense will just bend and not break. They can just hold him for the next. There's a minute 14 left doing a halftime with just down 14 points. Hopefully put something together in the second half. Well, there was no gain on the attempt by King. Now it's a matter, do you, do you like the down or do you like the yardage? Let's see what our referee John Sullivan shows. We have an illegal block below the knees. And that's a pretty sizable infraction, so why don't you take the penalty and move McNeese back out to the YSU 30. Which are probably out of field goal range. Yeah, because that would make be a kick close. now yeah, about 47 yards. Which may or may not be in his range. Well, Marino was one of two last week. But it wasn't 47 yards in length, if I'm not mistaken. Penn Darvis will throw. Broken up by Tony Barone. Jermaine Martin was the intended receiver. Another flag. Looks like a hold by the McNeese State offensive lineman. Here's a look at it again. And that may have been it. I think that was it. Right in front of the quarterback, Penn Darvis, is where the infraction took place. 
So that's been the biggest problem facing the Cowboys all season long. Too many penalties. Again, we remarked upon this earlier. Yeah, right now it's the only thing that's saving YSU. They're definitely out of field goal range with that penalty. Cowboys were flagged ten times last week. They've already been flagged five times tonight, and then you've got to add this one to the fray. And their penalties aren't small ones. Last week, the infractions averaged over 11 yards apiece. Now they've been flagged six times tonight for 60 yards, an average of 10 yards apiece. Still first down, nonetheless, from the 40. Pendarvis will screen. dump off the screen to Martin. Tripped up nicely. Great play. Great job on the play by Pat Reese. And he has played well over each of the first two games. And now the officials signify that McNeese has taken a timeout with 37 seconds left in the half. The only problem is Pat Reese and company have pushed them back closer to midfield than where they were originally at. McNeese was all the way down to the Penguins' 14-yard line. I think those two penalties got McNeese a little bit out of sync right now, which is a good thing for YSU because they just want to get out of here with a 14-point uh, mm -hmm. lead. And you are talking about field goals last week against Grambling when McNeese put up 52 points. They scored on a blocked field goal. They had five rushing, five touchdowns. rushing touchdowns. That was the most impressive thing about the whole day. Well, that's what led me to believe that this was going to be purely a rushing attack, but right now they've been pretty balanced. And Marino had a 35-yard field goal. So that would mean anything around 40 yards and up is a little out of his range or he has been untested upon. Yeah, I didn't get a look at him in, in the warm-ups. There's a look into one of the loges here at Stambaugh Stadium. And this game has been everything we expected it to be. The only problem is we didn't expect YSU to have zero at this stage of the game. Yeah, right now, I think McNeese has taken a, a page out of YSU's own playbook. Well-balanced the offense, great defense, special teams. Well, a big down here. Penn Darvis had his pass dropped by B.J. Sams. Third down and forever coming up. McNeese will need the ball all the way down to the YSU four for a first down. Like regardless of what happens, YSU is going to have very much time left on the clock. And even if they did, I don't think they'd try anything too risky. They just want to get in the, into the locker room, make their adjustments, sit down with their players, see what's going on, what they're seeing, what the, the guys up in the press box are seeing, get everybody back on the same page. Darvis out of the shotgun. He's going to run. He's got a long way to go. Stopped at the 31-yard line. TCAC and Byers in on the stop. And unless Wise wants to stop the clock, McNeese won't even bother. They have no timeouts left and only 14 seconds remaining. They're going to try the field goal. They're going to give it a shot. He said 47 yards? That's what it'll be by John Marino. Again, last week he hit a 35-yarder short and off to the right no good and that is the final play of the half so through two quarters at Stambaugh Stadium YSU being tested they currently trail McNeese State by a count of 14 to nothing stay tuned we'll have all of our halftime festivities here on Fox 17 62 when we continue with YSU football Okay, Coach, the team's momentum has been growing throughout the first half. How do you plan on keeping this going? Well, the big thing, we got to get something going on offense. We're going to get the ball here, and we've got to find a way to move the football, keep our defense off, and get some points on the board and, and get some momentum going. Our defense hung in there in the second quarter and played like crazy. We've got to get something going on offense. Okay, can we plan to see quarterback Colby Street back in the second half? Yeah, I'm not sure. We're going to go in and see what's going on and see what happened. You know, Lewis came in and made a good throw, and then we turned the ball over. So we're, we're just going to try to, we're trying to find the magic number right now. Thank you. Thank you, and good luck. Okay, Rob, we're hoping for the best. Now back to you. Thanks, Melissa. It was interesting to hear what the coach had to say because I know he's a little frustrated at the offensive play, Todd. It's a situation where his defense has carried this unit through two quarters of football, and that's what we expected when the season began. It would be the defense that would carry this team until the offense caught up. It's time for the offense to catch up. It's definitely time for the offense to catch up. Like I said, it's just a bad feeling when your defense is out there all the time, and you know it's because you're not making plays. 
hopefully the you know coach Klasik does a great job of making adjustments they'll come out here get the ball uh, and get something together well we are getting set for our halftime festivities from Stambaugh Stadium now keep in mind that we have been joined each week by students from the Youngstown State Telecommunications Department in addition to the students that help us on game day there is also a group of three students Zach White Diana Colangelo and J.P. Robles who each week go out and they find an interesting part of YSU football that we sometimes don't get a chance to see or hear. Well, this week our triumphant of YSU students have gone out and find someone similar to Adam Sandler but a little bit closer to home. Here's their story of the YSU student equipment manager. The game of football requires strength, agility, athleticism, and heart. Not all games are won between the lines. The hardest worker on the field doesn't always get recognized. This is the story of Jeff Hoover. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand by. Keepers. Keepers. My name is Jeff Hoover, but for some but for some reason along the athletic department I picked up the nickname of Peepers. My job is a student trainer, which basically involves getting them water, ice, maybe basic first aid, some medical treatments. It's kind of an expert job. We each have our assigned jobs to do. Two of us will have I'm in charge of timeouts, we'll have water bottles and whenever one team or the other calls timeout or there's an injury timeout, we'll go out on, onto the field. One of us will go all the way to the center, one of us will stay close to the sidelines, and we'll give water to the guys when they come over. Not only is Peepers a member of the team, he's also a fan. Emotions run high on the field as well as on the sidelines. The players and fans both start the season with one goal in mind. It has been five years since either of those groups realized that goal. I mean, it would be nice if we could get down on the field in Chattanooga and to raise the trophy and get a ring. And that's something that, yeah, you definitely look forward to, but if nothing else, the main thing that I'm taking away from here is the experience of being part of this program for four years. I do know where you go, where I want to be, where are you going? Clear that everybody from the players to the coaches, managers, trainers, all part of our football family, and we're all treated in the same way that they would treat each other. Welcome back once again to Stambaugh Stadium. We are at halftime of tonight's Division I AA showdown between two top ten teams. And right now at the break, sixth-ranked McNeese State leads eighth-ranked YSU by a count of 14 to nothing. Statistically, things much like the score favoring the Cowboys. They have 223 yards in total offense. Back through the air, Scott Pendarvis has done a decent job tonight. He has thrown for 97 yards, having completed what turns out to be 9 of 13. But the big difference offensively for YSU. The defense for the Penguins has done a fair job. But look at this statistic here. The problem, 11 yards rushing on 15 carries for the Penguins through the air. A combination of three different guys, Colby Street, Luis Gonzalez, and P.J. Mays, have completed just four of eight through the air for 89 yards. The Penguins limited to only 100 yards of offense through the first two quarters of play. And for the Penguins, the numbers continue to look even worse because they've converted just one out of six on third down opportunities, whereas McNeese has converted three of eight. The biggest problem for McNeese, they've been penalized six times. YSU on the plus side, the Penguins have yet to be penalized. That is one saving grace yes, I think in this football That is the only bright spot. Yep. Right now their offense has just been one-dimensional and not even that. Um, P.J. is a great running back, but when you have that many guys in the box, eight or nine guys in the box, it's just hard to run the ball. 
Well, they have no passing passing attack to complement the running game right now, and, and McNeese knows that, and they're keying in on that. Penguins will have to rectify that. They'll get the ball when we return. Third quarter action right around the corner here on Fox 1762. For the Honda store in Boardman, as you can see, the Honda store's new look is just about complete, but we still need to make room for the 2003 models. Right now, you can lease a new 2002 Civic four-door LX with zero down for as low as $185 a month, or drive a Honda Accord for only $205 a month. Remember, zero down, just sign and drive and receive 1.9% financing on 2002 Civics or 4.9% financing on Accords right here at the Honda Store in Boardman. Get your YSU football tickets today. You can be part of the action. It's hard-hitting Penguins football. Call for tickets, 941-1YSU, or stop by the ticket office. It's a great year for YSU football, and you can be part of the excitement. Experience Penguins football, the tailgate party to the winning touchdown. Group rates are available. Call the ticket hotline at 330-941-1YSU and get your tickets today. Forget about the highlights. Fox 1762 has the whole game. Watch YSU football. McNeese State takes on the Penguins this Saturday at 1030 on Fox 1762. The YSU Game of the Week is brought to you by E-Contractors, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. A war of words. M -nard, M -nard. Schnott, Schnott. A battle of egos. A first-year medical student would be able to detect that. Well, then how did you find out? And a comedy... <laughs> Takes no prisoners. I've come to find somebody smart to help me with my studies. Well, don't get me. <laughs> Re enlist with the troops from Match. Eight nights at 10 30 on Fox 1762. 27 First News and Fox 1762 present the Youngstown Warren Regional Chambers Business Showcase 2002, Thursday, September 19th at Mr. Anthony's in Boardman. This is the largest trade show between Cleveland and Pittsburgh, highlighting valley businesses and products. It's a great opportunity to meet and network with fellow businessmen. Admission is free and the public is invited. Plan to attend the Youngstown Warren Regional Chambers Business Showcase 2002, Thursday, September 19th from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. at Mr. Anthony's in Boardman. Watch First News at 10 for your first warning of severe weather. Hey, Don, how do you know when severe weather will strike? We combine the latest technology with experience to bring you a quicker, more accurate forecast. Get your first warning from First News at 10. This quarter of the Fox 1762 YSU Penguin Football Game of the Week is brought to you by McDonald's. Well, there's a look at our very own Dave Sess. Let me see if we've got this right. Our buddy Dave Sess, second guy, upper row from the left. Jamie Hall, assistant SID, and Trevor Parks also there. The YSU Sports Information Director looked into one of the press boxes here at Stamba. McNeese set to put the thing in play. John Marino will tee the ball up. He'll kick it to twin safeties. Darius Peterson, Gerald Burley. Burley from a yard deep. Bad ankle and all. Burley nice. up the field. That's why he's a preseason All-American as a kick returner. Also a preseason first team all-gateway selection as a kick returner. He ignites the crowd with a 43-yard kickoff return to start the third period. NYSU will begin at their own 42. You took the words right out of my mouth, Rob. They needed some type of spark to get this offense going, and hopefully that's it right there. Well, and... In just a few minutes here in the third quarter, we'll shortly be joined by Daryl James from Brookfield. He is our guest play-by-play -play announcer tonight. He was one of the guys we selected from our auditions, which were held at the Canfield Fair this year. Looks like Colby's back in the game at quarterback. So despite the hand injury, he will go. B.J. Mays takes the what first handoff. Gain out to the 46 yard line, so it's a pickup of four. Excellent block by Nick Roberts, the pulling guard, just leveled as the first guy he came up to. It's going to take a lot more of that, though, to get back in this game. P.J. Mays in the first half. Had quite a bit of work. Nine carries, but only 27 yards. He's now up that to 31 yards tonight. Mays again, but... Not much doing. Gain of a yard at best. It's 
looks like I got to return the favor to the McNeese State defensive lineman, uh, number 91, John Paul Jones. Just manhandled the tackle for YSU and got in there and made a nice tackle. So now the Penguins face with a third down situation from their own 47. Again, as we showed you during halftime, the Penguins converted just one of six on third down opportunities through the first two quarters. Street to throw. Fires in and out of the hands of Matt Rycraft. Fourth down coming up. That means Costa Carapetsis will come back out to punt. The McNeese State defense just put that fire out real fast. So one minute off of the scoreboard clock here in the third quarter, and the Penguins will have to give it up going three and out. Unfortunately, it's a two-way ball game, and just like the offensive coaches for YSU made adjustments, so did the defensive coaches for McNeese State. B.J. Sams, the single safety, awaiting the kick from Karapetsis. Grabbed at the 20. Oh. Sams finds a gap. Karapetsis, can he catch him? No. B.J. Sams with a touchdown for McNeese. Wow. And a late penalty flag for taunting, but the TD will stand. It's an 80-yard punt return, and for the second straight week, the specialty teams of YSU has been victimized. That's usually been a hallmark of YSU programs, just good special teams that don't really uh, don't really screw up for your football team very much. But right now, in these first two games, we've seen a lot of mistakes on the part of the YSU special teams. Boy, Sams with good speed, and when Thiessen and Godick ran into each other, that allowed Sams to get free, and you're just not going to catch him. Especially not Costa. And this now is here's what makes the it worse. Yep. Yeah. Right there's the taunting call. That should make you sick as a YSU fan and a YSU football player. It's one thing if a team comes in and, and just plays uh, with class and just dominates. Uh, it's another thing when they start taunting you. So the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty will take the ball back to the 13-yard line. 10-yard infraction, or is it a 15-yard infraction? They're going to leave the ball at the 13 or move it out to the 18. Yeah, that's what I thought. They're going to move it out to the 18. 15-yard penalty there. So the extra point attempt to be a, attempted by John Marino, sophomore place kicker from Covington, Louisiana. He will kick it out of the hold of Matt Gore. But he equates into a 35-yard extra point is good. That, that was a field goal for Marino tonight. It equates into a point, but it's the 21st point overall for McNeese. 13.43 to go in the third quarter. The Cowboys extend their lead, and now YSU has a mountain to climb. Well, this year at the Canfield Fair, Fox 1762 held sportscaster auditions. We picked five finalists. They will join us during each of our YSU telecasts this season. Tonight's leadoff hitter will be Daryl James from Brookfield, Ohio. Daryl, we want to welcome you to the booth. Ah, thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate the invite. I know you can't be too happy with what you've seen so far. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I had to say something here. We have the kickoff coming. It's uh, Darius Burley's back. Oh, it's out of the end zone. They're going to bring this one back up to the 20-yard line. It looks like I don't see any flags on the play. So, again, YSU will now get a chance to try and work a little offense. The only problem is, Darrell, they've got uh, a lot of room to make up here. Well, I, I understand the street's hands a little bit of pain, but he seems to be doing a fine job out here this evening. Uh, watching this defense, I think we're a little bit of a height difference, but it's nothing that we can't overcome out here on the field. Have, uh, it looks like P.J. May is sitting back here in the backfield. Street takes a snap. He's running the ball. Mm -hmm. Can't tell. Looks like about a two-yard gain. You don't need to see too many one-yard runs here the rest of the way. No, no, no. We need some big plays here. I know Colby, being athletic as he is, wants to run the ball a little bit more. 
very difficult when there's that many guys up front like that. Especially now that 21 points are starting to nail, put the nails in the coffin. They got to get something together. Ah, Streets back. All right, dodges. There one he is. It. There we go. DJ Mays with a nice reception there. Boy, he has really turned out to be a good receiver tonight for the Penguins offense. Yeah, he has. His, his hands have been uh, phenomenal this evening when he had the ball, too. He's held on to him. He hasn't dropped anything yet. This has been their most successful play of the night. A nice job of Colby to get away from Hadley Prince, who had the early pressure. Yeah, that brings him up to the first and ten. A pretty good yardage here, right on the 40. PJ had the ball again there. He broke the line of scrimmage. Anyhow, it looked like a couple yard gain. Just trying that off tackle play there. Pulling the guard, kicking out with the end. They got tight end, two tight end formation. I just think it's starting to get to the point in this game against this caliber of a football program where you got to put the ball up in the air. And unfortunately, I'm not too confident uh, in YSU's passing offense. <laughs> Oh, there we go again. Well, street throws complete. And he finds his fullback, Joe Juby. And another first down. So, Daryl, you brought us some luck. Yeah, well, hey, anything that works <laughs> up here, I'd be more than happy to oblige you fellas. Here's a look at the replay. How about this? They're throwing to the fullback. We've seen him throw to Chris DeMarle. Now they go to Joe Juby. I like it. I've seen I think in these first two games, I've seen more passes to the fullbacks than my entire career here. Maybe you should do that again. You've got to hurry up here, too. Here we have 20 seconds left on the play clock. Boy, not much running room for P.J. Mays at all. No, they, they're really holding up the inside. This, this Mechanese defense here, these guys are tough on the inside. Looks like it's going to result in a loss of two, leaving the ball at midfield. job and well thank you thank you they must have liked you enough to make you lead off uh <laughs> yeah evidently i made an impression on somebody <laughs> when i was out there <laughs> i had most of the tent laughing when i did my audition <laughs> that's all right we have most of the tent laughing when we're up here so 
Don't feel bad. Well, if you can't have fun at what you're doing, you know what they say. Are you a, a, a season hold, season ticket holder for YSU? No, I'm not. I wish I was. Uh, do you have any pull in that uh, field for me? I wish I did. Maybe we can work <laughs> something out. Hey, you well, should get some perks being up here, right? That's I'm under the assumption that was uh, part of the prerequisite. <laughs> to up here was a few we don't of the get perks. paid. Why should you? <laughs> oh, I get it's community <laughs> service. Exactly. Work. But you, when we talked at halftime, I mean, you know about YSU football. You knew about the team. You knew about the players. You weren't coming up here cold. No, I've done a lot of research. And, uh, well, since I got the phone call a few days ago about the uh, stats on a team, pulled them up off the computer. And, uh, well, you know, I hate to come in any place blind, especially in front of, uh, I'm guessing, 18,000 or more people here. <laughs> and they're all watching you. Yes, they are. <laughs> Even more up in the loge. Well, that was a penalty against McNeese on the return, so the Cowboys will start at their own 10. And... They'll just keep it close to the vest. Vic King, the ball carrier there. Minimal gain, if any. It'll bring up second down now for the Cowboys. I think the defense got their legs back. They're able to get their energy back over halftime. Fortunately, that won't last very long if the YSU offense can't get their act together. I think Coach Acock knows that. He mentioned that uh, with Melissa at halftime, that the offense has to get something together. And right now, they just aren't. Well, a spread attack right now for the Cowboys, but a delayed handoff to King. Nothing there. Yeah. Oh, excellent play on the defensive half. We well, like to see that from Matt Meckling finally stepping up and making a big play. Yeah, he's had some injuries over the past few seasons, but I think he's got he's got things back together here, and hopefully he'll be able to make an impact for this defense here this season. A third down situation now presented to itself for the Cowboys offense. They've got the ball just beyond their own 12. If they can hold them here, YSU will have an opportunity to have some pretty good field position. Eight forty-five to go in the third quarter. Pendarvis to throw. Fires. Complete to Jermaine Martin. And he had a little something on that pass. Yeah, he did. Pendarvis has a nice, strong arm. He's thrown the ball well tonight for McNeese. That pattern's been there all evening. That's a gain out to the 27, a pickup of right around 14 yards. Here's a look at the McNeese State offense. In motion, Jeff Hamilton. He'll block for Pendarvis, who's pressure. Nice. Stuvance had him. Pass away, nobody there. There it is, there's a penalty. Second time tonight we have seen the intentional grounding call against Pendarvis of McNeese State. I'll tell you, that's the only thing that's been why she's saving grace tonight has been the penalties. McNeese State just can't get it together. They, uh, you know, they look good running the ball, passing the ball, but these penalties have been hurting them. The score might be a little bit worse if it wasn't for some of these. Oh, second down still. Very impressive. I mean, they've been pretty much mistake-free this evening. And whatever mistakes they have made, YSU hasn't been able to capitalize on them. Ball back to the 22. Delayed handoff, Vic King. Cutting back, Meckling had him. Bracken finally takes him down at the 32. Gain of 10, short of the first down. Seven and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Right now what scares me is it's one thing if you're just executing because of, of good play calling, but it looks like the McNeese State football team is just a little bit tougher than YSU right now. And, you know, they're, they're putting guys on their back, uh, they're taunting them, they're rubbing salt in the wounds, and that's that's something that, that you just don't see too very much. Uh, teams coming into the Ice Castle and doing that to us. Possession down here. Pendarvis pumps, throws deep, has Martin open, but overthrows him at the 30 of YSU. Coverage applied by Pat Reese, and the punting unit will come out now for the Cowboys. It's a good thing he did overthrow him because he was open. 
Well, YSU will have an open week next week, and then they will travel to Western Kentucky on the 21st before heading to Southwest Missouri State on the 28th. And at this point, they need that open week. I mean, Coach Haycock really needs to turn that into two weeks of, of almost going back to, to training camp and really, you know, get back to the fundamentals and find out what, what the problems are here. This is YSU's last home game until October 5th when they'll host Indiana State. Burley fields the punt, didn't field it cleanly, but fielded it nonetheless and goes down at the 31. 6.55 to go in the quarter. We'll step aside with McNeese State leading YSU 21 to nothing. We'll keep Daryl with us. He'll call another series as we continue with coverage of YSU football on Fox 17 62. How's that for a shameless plug? Fox 17 62. And our guest play by play announcer tonight, Daryl James. Yeah, thank you for having me. There's only 6.55 left in the third quarter. Now, Luis Gonzalez is back in at quarterback now for the Penguins. Yeah. Well, they're going to rule out a fumble, and Chris DeMauro then picked up the loose ball at the 30-yard line. That was a nice save on DeMauro's behalf. That could have been a tragic for us. I tell you, when it rains, it pours. Lewis just like a statue back there. Here's a look at it again. Tried to run the play action. But Hadley Prince got in there quickly. The senior strong safety caused the fumble, but DeMauro, Johnny on the spot with the recovery, still results in a loss of 10. They're still not intimidated by the YSU passing game, and I don't blame nope. one bit, and they're just teeing off on it right now. It was a two tight end formation. Wow. Well, Gonzalez draws back, he unloaded the ball, overthrown. Not a good looking pass from Luis Gonzalez to P.J. Mays. No, was, that was a few over his head there. It's just like being in quicksand right now. I mean, you have to have the quarterback as your leader on offense, and when you're rotating quarterbacks, if, if Colby's hurt again or whatever the case may be, you just can't get the consistency, and especially when you're down by 21 points. You just you can't get something going when, when you got quarterbacks coming in and out. It gets to be really frustrating at that point, especially, as you said, McNeese rubbing a little salt. In Definitely. The it's, they're starting to get frustrated. You almost have to start playing for pride at this point. You just start... I hate to say it, but just get after these guys. And well, it's Gonzalez again to throw. This oh, time he's got he his man, T.J. Peterson, for a, a near first down. The only problem is the Penguins needed 20 yards. I think he might have got it. I, I believe they have it. If it's not, it's darn close. They're going to have to pull the sticks out. I believe they have that. Move him back. Uh, just, that was beyond, yep, bad just beyond the 40 inch. Take a look at the replay here. Nice grab by Peterson. Yep, uh, there it is. It is. Good okay, camera good, work, uh, guys. Yeah. Excellent call by the refs. So he goes out at the 48, two yards shy, but nonetheless, a great grab by the yep. freshman. Well, there, there he is. is. Come on. Oh, BJ made his on. move. BJ's gone. Nope. Uh, yeah, pushed out of bounds on the play by Chris White. But the run by P.J. Mays finally ignites the offense, and the Penguins get another chance to score. I think this is what they need to get that adrenaline boost go and get them out of that grind that they've been in. Yeah. That, that brings it down to where? About the four-yard line. Let's take a look, a look at the replay here. P.J. with a nice run. i got to eat my own words again. Looks like Lewis is getting something going here. You know, he delivered a nice ball to Peterson, and then that opened up a little gap for P.J. Mays. And That's Mays tonight on the ground, after that run of 48 yards, now has 82 yards on 14 carries. And it's a first and goal to go for the Penguins from the four. Mays and Doby are the setbacks. Mays grabbed from behind, shakes loose down to around the one-yard line. Knifing through quickly for McNeese was a shield Fairchild, but he couldn't grab Mays long enough to stop him. And P.J. turns it into a run of two. Well, YSU trying to avoid the shutout. The last time the Penguins were blanked, 1998, at Western Illinois on October 3rd by a count of 14 to nothing. That was the last time YSU was shut out. 
517 to go in the third quarter. I think it's do or die right here, Rob. Oh, I mean, it's they, gotta they, be. Have, they have to put this in the end zone. There's no doubt about it. Um, how McNeese reacts after that will be a big factor on how the rest of this game plays out for YSU. Well, here's the thing, too. I mean, you're still talking 517 to go in the yeah, third plenty quarter. plenty of time. McNeese scores on a punt return, so their offense has not scored yet in this frame, nor in the second half. You're right. You've got a whole 15 minutes left to play in the fourth quarter. You score here, and you get Luis Gonzalez fired up, and you get a little confidence going in that offense. Yeah, you know, the defense, they're getting a pretty long break here. They're, they're getting rested. Um, they've been playing pretty well with even uh, when they haven't been rested. So, I, I mean, I'm... I have confidence in the defense, just the offense I was a little bit shaky with, but it looks like Lewis has come in. Um, he's got something going here. Well, Penguin fans can catch exciting YSU football action during the 2002 season with family, friends, and coworkers. Groups of 20 or more can receive special ticket discounts along with scoreboard and PA recognition at the game. Call the YSU Athletic Ticket Office to schedule your group outing. Now, what do you think there, Gonzalez has planned for the second and two? Well, I think on second and two, I think you got to go to PJ. You Definitely. Still have to go to your, you have to go to your go-to guy. You got to go off tackle. I'd pull Roberts, the road grader. Yeah, there you go. And it looks like that's what they're going to have planned here, also. Exactly. What they're gonna do. There's PJ. Uh. Grabbed on the play by Hadley Prince and does not get in. Now you've got to think about throwing the ball. P.J. last week had two touchdowns. His best game ever. A 226-yard performance against Lock Haven last year. Last year he also had three touchdowns against Southwest Missouri. He can put up some numbers. He's got 33 career touchdowns on the ground for YSU. I'd like to see him hit the tight end here if they do pass it. Street bobbled the snap from center, and that screwed the whole thing up. Yeah, it was a third and one on one, too. Looks like they're going to run an option to the left side. They brought Colby Street back into the game. I don't know if that's a good idea. Looks like Lewis was, well, here he comes back into the game. He had some type of uh, consistency going. He had him in sync, some type of rhythm, and bringing Colby in like that. You and almost it, know exactly what they're going to do. They're yep. going to run the ball with him. Exactly. They brought Colby in to run the option. Couldn't handle the snap because of the hand. And now it's fourth down and goal to go for YSU from inside the McNeese 2. Got everybody to the left side. Give, Give to May. He's going to get in. Right. There it touchdown. is. Yep. YSU. All right. So P.J. with his third rushing touchdown of the year, his 34th in his career at ASU, and the preseason All-American has gotten the Penguins on the board with 4.05 to go in the frame. I have nothing against Colby, but I don't know if his hand is affecting him in taking the snap or something, but we've seen that a couple times this evening. I think he just needs to take a seat right now and let Lewis take over. Lewis seemed to be doing a fine job. He had the crew in order there, and when Street came in, it's got to be detrimental to his game with a hand that's hurt and trying to take mm -hmm. a snap off that center. Definitely. Couldn't have said it better myself. Jake Stewart, 3 of 4 on PATs this year, will kick it out of the hold of Gonzalez, who handled a tough snap, and Stewart pops it through, 4.05 to go. We want to thank Daryl James for joining us in the booth tonight. You did a great job. Thank you very much. Hey, gentlemen, I appreciate you guys thank having you. me. Thank nice you. Nice meeting you. Much. I'll pick up the season tickets that you fellas were talking <laughs> about. Uh, where? <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Again, you're watching YSU Football on Fox 1762. Well, the Penguins go 60 yards in eight plays. It's P.J. Mays going in from a yard out. And here's a look at the touchdown again. There's the road grader, number 61. Nice, nice block. kick out. Pancake this guy, and Roberts found this, or excuse me, P.J. found the seam for the touchdown. Six foot, 303 pound junior. I think he might be a little bit more than 300 pounds, or a little bit shorter than six foot, one of the two. <laughs> I just like the name Road Grader. That's all I cared about saying tonight was Road Grader. I'm just happy I'm able to smile at some point in this evening. Well, it's nice to see an offensive lineman such as yourself enjoy offensive play like that. I, like, I hope I can see more of it tonight. Now well, the Penguins have new life. Now we'll see if the defense can continue the streak. There's the pooch. They'll keep it away from 
dangerous hands of B.J. Sams. So the short kickoff will give McNeese the football right around their own 32-yard line. Well, fans can join YSU head coach John Haycock and the Penguins players each Tuesday for the Penguin Club team press conference at noon in the Devonco Stadium Club here at Stamos Stadium. Spend lunch with the Penguins and get an inside preview of each week's opponent and a recap of tonight's game. That's every Tuesday, lunch with the Penguins. YSU's defense fired up the toss back to Jacob Prim, resulted in a run of about three yards before he paid the price along the Cowboys' sideline. Yeah, this defense is definitely fired up. They're playing pretty good ball right now. The guys are knowing what their roles are. They know that you got to keep the running back on the inside. There's number 33, Stuvon's keeping the guy on the inside. You know he has help coming from backside, and that's exactly what happened. Boy, a lot of gang tackling going on there. Guy Mazard, Yancey Markham. Mazard packing, pacing back and forth. He's getting pumped up. He's sick of getting taunted. Crowd getting into it. Here comes the reverse. They're trying Huey Gardner. He's got the first down as he is tackled on the play by Pat Reese. And Reese is going to be injured on the play. Yeah, that was so Reese will be slow to his feet after the run by Huey Gardner takes the ball ahead of the 44. Uh, he looks and like a he's gain in of pain. Nine. Great deal of pain. Pat Reese, a 5'7", 179-pounder. Junior from Marion, Ohio. Watch the tackle. There's a missed tackle. Took him head on. Looked like he might have gotten a knee in the helmet. Pat Reese has come up with a couple of nice defensive plays here this evening. And for a defense, which its only sp sore spot going into the season was defensive secondary. You, know, you can ill afford to have a guy like a Pat Reese who has played well throughout the first two games of the season go down. Not at all. 3.05 in the third quarter, still to play. Here's another look at it. They had it pretty well defended, just some missed tackles. Should have been there. There's the first There's one. There's one, Matt Briggs. Briggs missed that chance. Barone gets blocked out of the way. Yeah. And Reese goes head on with Huey Gardner. Like I said, you always want to turn the running back into your defense, which is what uh, number 86, who is uh, Matt Briggs, did for the Penguins. Unfortunately, he didn't have much help coming backside like he was expecting. The YSU Athletic Department would like to thank Johnny Eagle for their season long support of Penguin Athletics. Well, you can watch Fox 1762 for YSU Penguins football. They'll travel to Southwest Missouri State on Saturday, September 28th, and you can watch all the action live at 2.30 right here on Fox 1762. Plus, Indiana State then takes on Youngstown State here at Stambaugh Stadium on October 5th. That'll be on tape delayed, 10.30 here on Fox 1762. Look at Reese being carried off the field, which is never a good sign. Oh, John Danyanko and Dan Wathen. It's his left leg that he is favoring. And he may have gotten it twisted when he made the tackle. A look into the YSU coach's booth. Brain Trust trying to figure out the right answers. So the corners will now be Jake Godick and Wayman Peters. So Peters will return. He was one of the starters tonight along with Godick. Barone the safety. Along with Mike Brackett. So that's your secondary for the Penguins. It'll be first down and 10 now for McNeese from their own 44. Handoff fullback, Andrew Robin. Sophomore from Point Bear, Louisiana. With a gain out to the 46, so a pickup of just two. Robin last week, two carries, eight yards against Grambling. 
McNeese a week ago had five different ball carriers score a touchdown, so they are well balanced. As far as that running attack, they had eight different guys a week ago carry the ball at least once. Yeah, with a 14-point lead right now, expect them to keep the ball on the ground as much as possible, lead up as much of that clock as they can. Now it's Prim in the backfield, but Pendarvis will throw. Pressured by Stackowitz, passes away. Sam quickly tackled by nice Tkak tackle. at the 49. Gain of only three. Great job by Tkak. He's been all over the place tonight. Like I said, you need your big time players to step up like that. And at this point in the game, you know, they, they can't let, they can't afford to let McNeese, McNeese score again. Mm -hmm. They got to stop him, give the ball back to YSU. Was able to get something going on offense, and hopefully they can keep that going. Now the Penguins have to stop the Cowboys here Definitely. on third this down. This is a big play. McNeese tonight. Crowd's getting into it. Three of nine on third down conversions. 0 of one, though, in the second half. Pendarvis throws. Great. Intending nice. it. Nice Whereas hit. Receiver Sam put the ball is jarred loose, and the Penguins' defense is held. And into Here's punt. Play. I think that was number, was that 44 on the hit? You got it, Yancey Markham. Yancey Markham, great hit. And Jason Cook into punt now for McNeese. His longest effort of the night was his last punt. He covered 40 yards. This is his fifth effort of the game. So McNeese still has not converted a third down here in the second half. Cook gets a spiral turnover. It will hop into the end zone for a touchback, and Wyatt will get it at their own 20. So on two possessions here in the second half, YSU's defense has forced McNeese to punt both times. Yeah, they're doing a great job. They're rotating a lot of guys, and they're keeping everybody fresh. Um, like I said, it looked like McNeese wanted to keep the ball on the ground, but they succeeded earlier in the game with a well-balanced attack. Um, but it looks like the YSU coaching staff made some, some pretty good adjustments there on defense, and hopefully the offense can, can match it. Yeah, the only problem, the punt return by B.J. Sams, which covered 80 yards for McNeese's third touchdown of the night. Luis Gonzalez in at quarterback again. He has relieved Colby Street, who has struggled with a hand injury. Toss back to P.J. Mays. Trying to get the corner, won't gut it. Goes down at the 19-yard line. I don't think they're going to succeed trying to get the ball to the edge. They tried that earlier in the, earlier in the game, and, and this defense is just too fast. I think they need to concentrate on the off tackle. Uh, you get Nick Roberts up there pulling, get your guards pulling, get some down blocks, which are a little bit easier for the offensive linemen. Um, and then complement that with some nice touch passes like they were earlier the, the previous drive. Well, Mays tonight, 18 carries for 85 yards and a touchdown. Last week, he carried the ball 26 times. Fake to Mays. Gonzalez to throw. Holding could be called. Pass caught by Burley along the far sideline at the 25. And it looked to me as if Joe Juby got away with the hole. The fullback for the Penguins. Trying to protect his quarterback. It's never a hold if you get away with it. Now let's see if we can see it here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if he didn't hold him, he disguised it pretty well. <laughs> yeah, he did. But a nice catch by Gerald Burley. A gain know. of six. I don't know anything about holding him. <laughs> Big third down here. Gonzalez with time. Fires. Got nice it. Nice catch. Missed tackle. Gerald Burley with speed into McNeese territory. Finally corralled on the play by Hadley Print. But that's the threat that YSU has they didn't have offensively because of the absence of Burley and Larvin. Exactly. I don't know if he's still hurt or not, but if he is, then great things to come from Burley. Great catch, but the missed tackle is what really sprung him. Last year, Gerald Burley caught 21 passes for 314 yards. Pretty In his career, protection. he has 27 grabs. Pretty good protection on the part of the offensive line. Gave Lewis enough time to hit Burley. The missed tackle. Nice game by the YSU offense. To the Cowboys, 45, a pickup of 30. And like they say, the pass sets up the run. Exactly. 
gain of six by Mays to close out the third quarter. So YSU gaining momentum. Can they overcome a 21 point deficit? We've got one quarter left to play from Stambaugh. It's getting good. But first, let's send it back to the studio before we return for the fourth quarter. Ryan Allison has tonight's two minute drill. Thanks, Rob. Now let's take a look at the two-minute drill. Plenty of other big-time college football games going on across the country, but we'll head right down the street in Columbus. The Buckeyes and Coach Tressel, very used to taking on Kent State, but perhaps not with this much firepower. The Ohio State defense, bigger, faster. Mike Doss proving it in the first quarter. An early interception, and this guy's a playmaker. 45 yards on the touchdown return for Doss. 14-zip Buckeyes. The Harding grad. Maurice Claret, a great day, a touchdown earlier, and another one in the air, literally. Reese goes airborne for the seven-yard touchdown reception. Claret, they didn't need him much today because the passing attack was great for the Buckeyes. Still 64 yards rushing and two scores. Maurice now five touchdowns on the early year, and the Buckeyes just roll over Penn State today by a final of 51-17. to Now let's head to Western Pennsylvania on the high school level. The Sharon Tigers hosting Pius X. Team X on the move, Kevin Thomas scrambling for a few yards, that's important because it sets up the very next play, Melvin Stewart, give him about a 9.5 on that dive right there, he's in for the score, the extra point after that, huge in this game because that's all the scoring, Sharon would fall just one point shy in this one, 7-6, to six, the Tigers drop two games in a row. Now let's stay in Pennsylvania, a big matchup between Reynolds and Sharpsville, the Blue Devil band pumped up, and they should be. The defense stepped up big in this one. Ray Rotel, an interception here to end the Raider drive. That would set up a touchdown run by Rich Gollum. Watch him. The low five right there. He's in for the pay dirt. 15-yard touchdown, and the Blue Devils pitch a shutout today. They win by a final today of 14 to nothing. And that's a look at the two-minute drill. We'll be back with the game of the week right after this. We're talking. Well, we are just about set to get the fourth quarter underway from Stambaugh Stadium, but first, let's send it down to the sideline and check in with our very own Melissa Mack. Melissa? Yes. We have had an unfortunate accident, Rob. Cornerback Pat Reese does have a sprained left ankle. At this point, we are sending him out for x-rays. Uh, as we get new information, we will keep you up to date. Thanks, Rob. That's a tough loss absorbed by the Penguins secondary. Definitely. Hopefully this wise you up and so can keep this going and keep that defense uh, off the field. Second down for the Penguins from the McNeese 39. Gonzalez to throw. Pumps, lets it loose. Going for Burley. Can't get it to him. Good coverage on the play by Keith Smith. Excellent coverage. And for Gonzalez tonight, he is now four of six through the air for 81 yards. But he had completed his last three before that. And now a big third down opportunity coming up for the Penguins. Uh, I'm watching Burley off the field. Looks like he still has a little bit of a limp. I don't know if it, how much it will affect him. Well, YSU 2 of 5 on third down conversions in the third quarter. They were just 1 of 6, however, in the first half. Mays won't go anywhere. Stuffed at the line of scrimmage. First to get him, Roderick Royal. Linebacker who transferred from Florida. And there is no gain on the play. Give a lot of credit to the McNeese State defense. YSU came out with an unbalanced line. They had every, everybody to the left side there. They pulled Nick Roberts to add even more weight to that side, and they still couldn't get anything. Fourth down and four. Now well, YSU a week ago against Clarion. A one fourth down conversion and failed. They'll go for it here. Beautiful. McNeese jump. Gonzalez will Free throw. Play. Now they're gonna blow the play dead even before it got underway. A lot of finger point going on. Yeah, how about that? You did it. No, you did it. No, you did it. I didn't see any movement I, along the YSU front. Yeah, I think that was McNeese State, definitely. But the Cowboys look happy. It looked to me, if I'm not mistaken, Jimmy Abram, number 42, jumped prematurely. And that's what the officials are discussing. 
Yep, it's against the Cowboys. Great. Big penalty now because that will give YSU an automatic first down. So the Penguins get a gift. Great job Here's of discipline. Here's a look at it again. You didn't see any movement until the snap of the ball from the YSU front. They already blew this play dead because McNeese jumped prematurely. So the Cowboys, biggest problem in the first half, too many penalties. Well, that one is costly. It's their 10th infraction tonight. They've totaled 95 yards in penalties. And for McNeese, they've now had 20 penalties called against them in two games. This one has given the Penguins four fresh downs. Gonzalez to throw. Pressure. Fire. May. Gonzalez is the move away. Definitely. Yeah, he was under pressure there big time. Again, it was a shield Fairchild coming in to pressure Gonzalez. Weiss who's going to have to pick that up off the corner here in the last few minutes of this game. Lewis looks like he's been in it the whole game. He's making some pretty good decisions on the, uh, the offsides penalty there. Gonzalez, the transfer quarterback from the University of Cincinnati. Hails from Miami, Florida. Played his high school ball at Coral Park. The junior under center. Needs some time. Steps up. Gonzalez will crash and burn back at the 43. Hadley Prince Knight through to get the sack for the Cowboys. 13.30 to go in the game. Looks like Joe Juby there getting beat. So the officials, which looked as if Prince may have brought him down at the 43, the officials will spot it at the 42. Nonetheless, a loss on the play of eight yards. Third and 18, should be any surprises here. They're gonna have to go to the air. Unfortunately, we're not the only ones that think that. Yeah, the play clock's at zero. And we have a dead ball foul for delay of the game against the Penguins. That'll move them back to the 47. That's YSU's first penalty of the night. After being flagged six times a week ago for 91 yards, their first infraction comes here in the fourth quarter. The only problem is it pushes them back to the Cowboys 47 and really makes it third and long. Yeah, we commented on that earlier. That's one of the one of the improvements that we have seen tonight is the lack of penalties, uh, but that couldn't have come at a worse time. Mm -mm. Gonzalez will throw for Aaron Marshall. He was covered, bumped, no flag. There, I, there is a flag. Is there a flag? Back I think it's back up the field. Yeah. Looks like we've got holding on YSU. And this looked like a missed assignment. There was some type of miscommunication there between between Lewis Gonzalez and his receiver. Now, McNeese will decline this penalty. They will force YSU into a decision on fourth down from the Cowboys 47, and the decision has been made. Costa Carapetsis will come out and punt. So for Carapetsis, this will be his seventh punt of the night, his longest effort this evening. 51 yards. That was his most recent punt for Carapetsis. That 51 yarder earlier in the game was his longest of the season. I was curious to see the type of reaction we get from the McNeese State uh, defense after the a nice drive YSU had. Carapetsis kind of pooches it down the field. Sams will pick it up at his own 11. Looking for room, and we'll return it 10 yards out to the 21, maybe ahead of the 22-yard line. 12 and a half minutes left in the game. Again, the YSU defense has to come up big for head coach John Haycock. I think so. I think we're going to have to have a turnover here pretty soon. Fortunately, or fortunately for YSU, the McNeese State ground game has been faltering slightly. Let's see if they can keep that up. So again, Scott Pendarvis, the quarterback, will break his team from the huddle. Let's go, Cowboys! Vic King in at tailback. He'll take the handoff. Has running room. 
Moves his way ahead of the 31, a yard short of the first down. It's a delay, kind of stifled the YSU defense for a minute there. Yeah, that's, just, that's definitely what you don't want to see. I mean, the clock just keeps ticking away. They're just going to keep eating time off the clock with a 14-point lead. Uh, that's the last thing you want to see as a YSU uh, defender. From the 31, give to the fullback, Andrew Robin, and he has the first down. McNeese will get a chance to chew up some more time off the clock. Gain of about four for Robin. Ball spotted just short of the 35. Next week, McNeese will travel to Louisiana Monroe for a six o'clock kickoff. As we already mentioned, Penguins are idle next week. And then they've got two straight road games in the gateway. Playing at Western Kentucky and outside at Southwest Missouri. Pendarvis will throw. Under pressure. Nice. Get him. By Stu Vance throws, intending it for Jermaine Martin, but the pass is incomplete. We talked about Pendarvis' strength, and it showed right there. The Penguins couldn't get him down. One of the few times we've seen the McNeese State offensive line falter. There's some excellent pressure. Stu Vance, Tim, Tim Frost getting in on there. Good double coverage. Pass just thrown away for the most part, though, even though Jermaine Martin was in the ball in the vicinity. But the odd thing about that, you throw the ball, you've stopped the clock. 11.28, yeah. no time ticking off. Second down for McNeese from their own 35. Now they go to the ground. King, gain of three. Grabbed by TCAC. Tim Frost helped out as well defensively. Third down situation now for the Cowboys. And again, they have not converted on third down in the second half. YSU in fact, they're just 3 of 11 for the game. 3 of 11. YSU just needs, they need someone to step it up right now. One of these seniors. In fact, I don't even care if it is a senior. Just someone on that defense has to step up, force a turnover, something. Get some pressure on them. They can't afford to give up this. Let that, that, that they convert on this third down. Pendarvis will throw. Over the middle. Pass caught. That'll be close. TCAC makes the tackle on Jeff Hamilton, the tight end, who takes it ahead of the 45, and he is yeah. very close to the I first down. And I think you're right, Todd. I think he did get him. Jeff Hamilton, a week ago, caught the only touchdown pass for McNeese. It was a nine-yard grab from Scott Pendarvis against Grambling. And this reception here, which will result in a first down more than likely. Could be as big as a touchdown for McNeese at this stage of the game. Yep. And the Cowboys will keep possession. They picked a key time to convert on third down. McNeese's passing game hasn't been stellar, but it's been effective when they needed it. And Darvis tonight has been up for 121 yards. He's 12 of 19 for 121. So Pendarvis has done a good job directing the offense of McNeese. Little flip. Back to Vic King. Brandon Byers has him. Guy Mazard is in there along with Justin Delarose to pull him to the ground at around the 48. Trying to catch a YSU defense with a little something unexpected. Keep him guessing. The YSU did a good job that time keeping him contained, keeping a minimal gain. It's a three-yard pickup. Right around 10 minutes left in the game. But I think, unfortunately, more important for McNeese is that clock is running. McNeese jumped out to a 14 to nothing lead in the first quarter on a 25-yard touchdown run by B.J. Sams and then a 28-yard strike from Pendarvis to Martin. That's how it stood at halftime. Each team scored once in the third quarter. Pendarvis' yeah, pass deflected, it. intended for Martin, Two penalty broken up, and you're right. Definitely. Russell Stuvance is going to be called for pass interference. Yeah. Now Stuvance is saying the ball was deflected, and that means I did not commit interference because he is no longer exempt from me tackling him. We'll have to see if we can get a replay on that. The ball was deflected when Pendarvis delivered the pass. 
So that may wipe out the interference call again. There was the another students. penalty. I don't know what the there's a flag in the backfield somewhere, but I don't know what that Yeah, there's one at the 47 there it is, right yeah. in front of the YSU bench. So Pendarvis is talking to the official. They're going to pick them both up. How about that? Two flags, neither stand. Ah, oh, there we go. One stood. Okay. Illegal procedure, Illegal the call against McNeese. The pass interference, though, was waved off. I didn't get a good look at it, but it looked like it was a pass interference call, so that might be a blessing for the Penguins. Now, unless they're going to wave it off because they felt it was deflected. They've marked off the five-yarder against the Cowboys for the illegal procedure. So the ball down at the 43, and that will be the call. Yep, they waved it off. The pass interference was waved off because of the deflection. Okay. So for McNeese, and even 100 yards in penalties tonight, that was their 11th infraction of the game. Here's a look at it. There's no doubt. Russell Stuvance got to Jermaine Martin yeah, ahead of time. it was time, deflected, though. Because the pass was deflected, there was no penalty. So Pendarvis Draw. will keep it. And there's Russell Stuvance. Great play. Nice job to shadow the quarterback and not allow yeah, that he wasn't tricked that time. He was, he, he, this guy was the quarterback the whole time, and he made a great play. So a gain of just two to the 45, and now it's third and 10 for the Cowboys. Here's a look at. And we've got a timeout taken. 9.35 to go in the game. We'll do likewise and step aside, and we'll see if YSU can round. Games to be played in this game. McNeese facing a huge third down. Scott Pendarvis tonight has found seven different receivers. He'll throw here. He goes for Martin. Barone has coverage, and the pass is well out of reach for Jermaine Martin. And now the Cowboys will have to punt. Looked like a miscommunication between the quarterback and the receiver there. Uh, he was looking for that ball inside on his inside shoulder, and it ended up being towards the sideline on his outside shoulder. Well, you can't fault the YSU defense. You can't at all. You know, they look a little shaky early, but they're, it's, after that, they've been keeping up their end of the bargain here. I mean, the, other, the only other touchdown came on, on the special teams end. Well, keep in mind... The second touchdown of the night scored by McNeese was only 39 yards in length, so they didn't even have to go that far. They've really had only one sustained touchdown drive against the Penguins this evening. The punt by Cook, short, but it gets a decent bounce. About the 22. And it will be down to that spot by Huey Gardner. Well, I think this is a do or die situation. You're down two scores, so. you're not gonna get the ball more than three times over the final nine and a half minutes, which means you've got to score two out of the three times you touch the ball the rest of the way. And I don't think you can do it purely on the running game. They have to put the ball up in the air. I think uh, Lewis Gonzalez will be back there uh, calling the shots. We'll see what he's what he's, uh, what he's made of here right now. The offensive line has to hold their blocks, give them some time. And hopefully they'll be able to make some big plays and make them quick. Now, P.J. Mays will be a flanker to the left along with Matt Rycraft. Josiah Doby, who a week ago averaged almost 26 yards a carry against Clarion is the lone setback. But he'll stay to block, pass deflected oh, into the air, geez. grabbed by Roderick Royal, and that will be a touchdown McNeese, the linebacker, who was the Southland Conference Defensive Player of the Week last week, comes up with the turning point of the game. The interception return has snuffed out any chance YSU will have of winning tonight. I think that was just... I hate to give him credit, but that was a great play on his part. He tipped the ball to himself, caught it, ran in for the touchdown. It's just great athleticism on his part. Well, that's what they expected from when from Roderick Royal when he transferred here from. Calling the shots. We'll see what he's what he's uh, what he's made of here right now. The offensive line has to hold their blocks, give them some time. And hopefully they'll be able to make some big plays and make them quick. Now, B.J. Mays.
will be a flanker to the left along with Matt Rycraft. Josiah Doby, who a week ago averaged almost 26 yards a carry against Clarion, is the lone setback. But he'll stay to block, pass deflected oh, into the air, geez. grabbed by Roderick Royal, and that will be a touchdown, McNeese, the linebacker who was the Southland Conference Defensive Player of the Week last week, comes up with the turning point of the game. The interception return has snuffed out any chance YSU will have of winning tonight. I think that was just, I don't give him credit, but that was a great play on his part. He tipped the ball to himself, caught it, ran in for the touchdown. Just, just great athleticism on his part. Yeah, that's what they expected from, when, from Roderick Royal when he transferred here from Florida. Exactly, there's a reason why he was at the University of Florida. Here's a look at it again. Gonzalez had it batted right into the air looking for P.J. Mays. And there's no one there. And that might be the final nail in the coffin there. About a 20-yard interception return for a touchdown. The extra point attempt now by John Marino. Finds the mark. 9-14 left to play. It's now McNeese, 28, YSU 7. You're watching Penguins football on Fox 17, 62. Well, YSU, after seemingly gaining some momentum along the way and some value of confidence, has had the air let out of their balloons after Roderick Royal returns an interception for a touchdown. And in the second half, McNeese has scored on special teams and defense. So they've had a pretty well-rounded game here tonight. Yeah, they're using YSU's own game plan against them. They have an offense that doesn't make too many mistakes. Um, They've been forcing some turnovers. The special teams has come up big for McNeese State and a very stingy defense, and that, that's been the difference in this game is that defense. The YSU's offense, they haven't been able to get anything together, and when they did, uh, they couldn't couldn't be consistent. You know, they, got, they had one good drive, and that was it. And the only thing that head coach Tommy Tate of McNeese State can criticize, maybe except at times of the lackluster play of his offense or inconsistent play, is penalties, exactly. That's their 12th infraction of the night. And silly flags. Yeah, exactly. Some have been costly, some have been silly, but just lack of discipline. If they can get that together, they'll have a pretty good ball club here. Well, they'll remain at least sixth in this week's 1AA poll. Question is, what will this loss do to YSU standing, according to the Sports Network? Gerald Burley with the kickoff return. Met at the 28-yard line by Ryan Garrison. And the Penguins will come back out offensively at that spot on the field. You never say never. That's one thing I've learned in my life is, is you can never give up. There's always hope. But it's just the offense has been too inconsistent here this evening. They definitely have to go to the air, and McNeese State knows that. They'll just be able to tee off. Luis Gonzalez in at quarterback. Colby Street gave way. His injured left hand had been bothering him tonight. He's unable to go the rest of the way. So Gonzalez, who just threw his first interception of the season, back to the air, throws complete to Mays. Nice move to get free at the 35. Has the first down, bumped out of bounds. And around the 41-yard line of the Penguins, P.J. Mays becoming a complete <laughs> We've seen he's, he's, he's got the complete package. He can run the ball, he can catch the ball. And so far tonight, that's been their only offense, is, is uh, getting the ball in the hands of P.J. through the pass. Gain of 13. Let's look at the replay. Gain of 13 yards on the play to the 41. And for Mays, that's his fourth reception of the night. And if there's someone out there who deserves the Peyton Award more than P.J. Mays, I'd like to watch him play. Play action. Gonzalez again. Mays steps out of bounds, bumped out of play by Jovan Burns. Minimal gain of only three, however. I think McNeese will give him that anytime. Three yards. Mm -hmm. 852 left in the game. Yeah, they don't want to see the clock stop. And eventually they're gonna catch on to that. It looks like their only passing attack is through PJ Mays right now. You're right. I think you can see a little limp in Gerald Burley. He is not 100%. But his senior year, he knows he's got to. He knows he's got to tough it out. Gonzalez looks for Burley. Yeah, it, Overthrew him by a good eight yards. Very evident right there. And I think at, at this point, I don't know if you keep him in there. I don't know if you try and aggravate that injury, make it even worse. I mean, they can still 
the season isn't over by any means. You know, but if you lose a player like Murley, it's going to make it a lot harder down. You know, as you go down the road. Here's a look at the play. And head coach John Haycock not happy with his offense right there. I don't blame him one bit. Gonzalez just threw it up there. And now Burley has left the game. Aaron Marshall will check in. Gonzalez again over the middle. Throws for his tight end Schumacher. Did he make the grab? Yes, he did. At the 48 of the Cowboys. That's a first down for the Penguins. That's clutch. It's a gain of eight. So Schumacher with some good solid hands at tight end. Despite the loss of Dennis DeLugos tonight to a bad knee, Schumacher has stepped up. Yeah, well you don't have that threat in your wide receivers with Burley out of the game. You got to go to your fullbacks, your tight ends, even the tailbacks. Well, Schumacher with his second grab of the game. He's totaled 56 yards now. 56 yards now in receptions. Gonzalez looking for Mays. You've got pass interference, and it will be called against Jovan Burns, the senior cornerback from Houston, Texas. He virtually just pushed. P.J. right out of bounds. So a 15-yard penalty against McNeese will move the ball down to the Cowboys 33. Well, right now, YSU's doing what they have to do. I just think uh, they're going to run out of time here eventually, down by 21 points. 8-12 left in the game. McNeese now with 120 yards in penalties. Well, advanced tickets for the Indiana State game on October 5th are available through the YSU Athletic Ticket Office located here at Stambaugh Stadium. Plenty of good seats remain with reserved seating at $12 and general admission at only $8. Stop by the YSU Athletic Ticket Office or charge by phone at 330-941-1YSU during normal business hours to reserve your seats for the game on August, October 5th against Indiana State. Josiah Doby in motion. Toss back to PJ. Sidesteps his first defender, Hadley Prince, and then takes the ball back to the line of scrimmage. Give a lot of credit to the McNeese State defense. Even though YSU has opened up the air game a little bit, uh, they're still handling the run very well. Inside of eight minutes left in the game now. Burley is back in at wideout. Mays and Doby are the setbacks. Gonzalez in trouble. He will crash and burn at the 40-yard line. Again, a Shield Fairchild coming off the corner with the blitz. Also, John Paul Jones getting credit for the sack, and it's a loss of seven. It's just textbook football right now. You stop the run, then you tee off on the pass. That's exactly what they're doing. McNeese has been able to accomplish that all evening. Third down for YSU, 17. So the Penguins looking at a third down. They're four of eight here in the second half. Five of 14 for the game. Gonzalez overthrows Burley. Closest guy to the, bat, the, the to the football was Chris White, and it sails out of bounds for an incompletion. I don't know what Burley's still doing out there. I don't. I'd want to save him for the rest of the season. I wouldn't want to risk it. I mean, I know you're a senior and you want to play as much as you can and, and have as big an impact on the game as you can just to help your teammates, but I think you'll help him even more if you sit this one out the rest of this game. I'm not sure if they have a deep threat with Burley not even being 100% that can match him. No. You've got two converted quarterbacks as your starting wideouts. So Gonzalez will go right back to Burley, who cannot make the catch at the 23-yard line of McNeese. So the incompletion will force Wyatt to turn the ball over on downs. And the Cowboys will now try to snuff out the final six and a half minutes of the game. 
This is where McNeese State wants to let their offensive line take over. They played well throughout the entire game, but now is when they want to dominate and just eat up the clock. Get a nice long drive here. And I, I, I hate to talk like that, but that's, that's what their game plan is. You know, it's hard to remain optimistic at this point. And they're going to substitute as well. They're going to bring in Michael Allen, a 6'2", 226-pound senior quarterback from Spring, Texas. And he will relieve Scott Pendarvis. And quarterback from the stand, number 16, Michael Allen. Now the Cowboys tonight have used nine different ball carriers. So Very whichever well two balanced. are back there yeah. doesn't really matter. They've all seen playing time tonight. This one just happens to be Jacob Prim. Uh, and he carries the ball into YSU territory to the Penguins 49, and he's got a first down with a gain of 11. And it's, it's hard when you're on defense at this point. I mean, I, I played two seasons, two seasons on the defensive side of the ball, and, and it's just hard when uh, you're out there a long time, you're getting tired, and you try to remain optimistic, but really you know that there isn't too much of a chance, and, and you're just pretty much playing for pride. 6.20 to go. A lot of the fans starting to head home, except the strong contingent from Lake Charles, Louisiana, those who have followed McNeese. Here's Prim again, grabbed by Delarose and Barone. They finally stop him at the 43, but it still results in a gain of six. At this point, I think Weiss needs to return to favor and start uh, bringing in some of their second string guys, getting them a little bit of experience with uh, five minutes, 45 seconds left in the game. Weiss has an open week, which will then lead into conference play. Prim again, cuts across the grain, penalty flag is down. Russell Stuvant, Mike, uh, Martin Stakowitz. There's who is that guy, Mazar, that's slow getting up? Yep. Stackwitz and Stuvant's in on the stop at 43. The is uh, I'm not sure if that's Mazard. It's at 88 no, of 69. 69. And that would that would be John. Uh, no, actually, I'm sorry, it's Keelan Logan. Keelan Logan from Ursuline. 6'1", 294-pound junior defensive tackle. And to stop the clock momentarily with 5.31 to go. Well, Eagle Wear Incorporated, the area's premier custom screen printer and embroider, is proud to salute the 2002 YSU Penguins. Eagle Wear Incorporated can design personal logos for T-shirts, sweatshirts, caps, bags, and towels. Look for Eagle Wear Incorporated on the Internet or call them at 534-3406 for the latest in high school, college, and pro apparel. And we'd like to thank them for providing us with our game day shirts here on Fox 1762. There's the end around, which worked for a touchdown by B.J. Sams, except this time... It's carried by Drew Blanchard and results in a yard, maybe two at best. Maybe but two. Blanchard, a week ago in the big win over Grambling, carried the ball one time, much like that, except that resulted in a 40-yarder. This one results in uh, something a little bit less. And now it is fourth down for Magnese. And YSU will burn a timeout with 5.09 to go in the game. I, I think at this point when YSU does get the ball, they definitely have to go into their two-minute drill. It's a gallant effort on their part, but this is a good McNeese State ball team, very well balanced. Um, they can run the ball, they can pass the ball. Uh, I think like we spoke of earlier, their only downfall is the penalties, and that's something that you can, uh, you can correct, and I think they will. So YSU just hoping to get the ball back and give their offense a chance to gain some more confidence. Into punt once again for McNeese will be Jason Cook, the redshirt freshman. Anthony Barone back to receive the punt, standing on his 10-yard line. Seventh punt of the night for Cook.
Maybe a two yard pickup by Barone there. Looks like he took it about to the 13 yard line. So it and looks like YSU's offense has their work cut out for them. They got just over five minutes left in this game. They have to go to their two minute drill. They got to get down the field as fast as possible. And unfortunately, they haven't had too much of a, a passing game to speak of, except for their uh, throwing it to P.J. Mays tonight. Um, Burley hasn't, hasn't had 100%. That's obvious. It's going to get pretty ugly here. Five oh one left. Wyatt will hustle out to the 13 yard line. Looks like they got their second string in. Green yep. and a quarterback. New quarterback. That's number 12, Justin Green, a six foot, 180 pound senior from St. Clairsville, Ohio. Darius Peterson, the ball carrier, and a penalty flag ensues. Look like a face mask, maybe. Nine, but it looks like they have a different game plan now. They want to get their their backups in there, get them some experience, which is a good call uh, by Coach Acock. So P.J. Mays has concluded his work tonight. For Mays, 91 yards on 21 carries and a touchdown. Here's Darius Peterson. Yeah, definitely. That should be a 15-yarder, too. But I don't think it was. Yeah, they're just going to move it out to the 26. Yeah, it looked like he was actually brought down by his face mask, which would be a 15-yarder. Defender looks better than a 55. I wanted to see McNeese total 200 yards in penalties tonight. <laughs> what are they at right now? How about 100 and a quarter? And they're still winning by three touchdowns. Green again to Peterson. He's got some quicks. Peterson ahead to the 38-yard line. That'll be a gain of 12 by Darius Peterson and another first down. We'll give YSU that. They have three good-looking tailbacks, and then P.J. Mays, and then Josiah Dobie, and now Adobe, but now Peterson. YSU. And Darius Peterson, a nice-looking back. The junior, a year ago, had 339 yards rushing on 70 carries. Also had five rushing touchdowns. In fact, in the opener against Lockhaven, he had a career-high 13 carries for 51 yards. Against Clary, and he had a career-best 111 yards rushing. He has shown flashes of brilliance. In fact, during... Uh, summer camp. He had shifted over to defense when they were a little thin at corner. And here's Great Peterson speed. again. Into Cowboys territory. Finally pushed out of bounds at the McNeese 47. It's the first time they've been able to get on the edge against this McNeese, McNeese State defense, but I think also uh, McNeese has their, their mm -hmm. second string yep. uh, players in also. Yeah, I think he can play right now for a little confidence. These guys work hard during practice oh, yeah, as definitely. well. definitely. Darius Peterson shows you again that he can come in when needed upon, but you know, it's a glut of tailbacks here at YSU. Yes, it is. P.J. Mays, Josiah Doby, Darius Peterson, all talented. There's not enough footballs at this stage to go around. But YSU needs their running game to continue to click. Justin Green will throw for the first time tonight. Good protection. Throws. Aaron Marshall has the grab at the Cowboys 39. Gain of eight yards. So Justin Green with the completion. 415 left in regulation. Now, if you'd like to order a copy of tonight's game on VHS, it'll cost you $39.95. For McNeese State fans, it'll cost you $99.95. To place your order, call 1-800-442-2547 during business hours, or log on to our websites for more information. Proceeds will benefit the YSU Scholarship Fund. That does come with an autographed picture of yourself, doesn't it, Rob? Yes, but that decreases the value. <laughs> so we're not supposed to promote that aspect of it. Handoff given, Josiah Doby. He'll get a chance to lug the ball a few times here in the late going. First down for the Penguins. I, I see number 52 for the McNeese State still out there. That's their star linebacker, Roderick Royal. So it looks like they're keeping some of their starters in there. They might want to secure this 21-point lead, help them in the first. Mm -hmm. Coming in, McNeese was ranked 6th after being ranked 11th in the preseason poll. YSU was ranked 8th when the first poll came out. They stayed 8th last week. They'll slip a little bit now. Justin Green off target looking for Matt Rycraft, but a penalty flag has been thrown. This will be defensive pass interference, and the Cowboys continue to rack up the penalty yardage here tonight. Yeah, you counted them out. Maybe they will, they will reach 200 yards. There's still three, three minutes left. the only left. thing left. <laughs> it's, you know, 
The only thing left is to decide what the final score will be tonight. We already know which team will win and if McNeese can hit 200 yards and penalties. It almost seems like a goal of theirs, the way they're playing. Unbelievable. And they'll be winning by three touchdowns with that type of stat. Again, last week, McNeese, 10 penalties, 116 yards. Tonight, 15 penalties, 140 yards. The most recent infraction has given YSU a first down at the Cowboys 21. Green on the option. Tosses it back to Darius Peterson. He'll go nowhere. That's Roderick Royal coming up to make the initial hit on Peterson, who is stopped at the 24, and that's a loss of three. He's a good-looking linebacker. He's going to wreak havoc for the Cowboys uh, the rest of the season. Good size, good speed. Looks like a good leader out there. Here's a look at the play. Tried to run that into the short side. Jimmy Abram, also one of the starters, still in there, makes a stop, senior defensive end. Green quickly dumps it off to Peterson. Running room at the 10. Stepped out of bounds at the 6. Why is you looking for a consolation score here? It's been their bright spot the entire game is hitting the tailbacks out of the backfield. They've been able to do it with P.J. and now they're doing it with Peterson. Look at it again. Green able to get it off under some pressure. Nice job of John Schumacher trying to deliver some blocks downfield. Peterson. Fights hard down to the four, possibly to the three. Peterson, the ball carrier, tackled by number 25, the shield. Yeah, they've given to the four yard line. Second down and goal to go. 2.15 to go in the game. Peterson stopped at the two. And the Penguins will not be at home until October 5th when they will play their first home game in the Gateway by playing host to Indiana State. In fact, the first 7,500 fans will receive a Pete the Penguin bobblehead, compliments of McDonald's, Option Care, and Coca-Cola. You can call the YSU Athletic Ticket Office for information about purchasing game tickets. Do you have your... Pete the Penguin bobblehead dog? Yes, I do, as a matter of fact. Todd, you have one? Yes. Very nice. Thanks uh, to my sister. I have one as well. Sitting on my desk at work. If it's successful, Penny's out next year. <laughs> Justin Green to throw. Looking for TJ Peterson, but he cannot connect. And I, I think you mentioned earlier they have an open week coming up, and I think that might be a, a godsend because they're going to need it. Um, they really got to find out what the problem is. Um, the defense hasn't looked too bad. Hasn't looked bad at all. The offense, though, just inconsistency has been plaguing them these first two games. And yeah, they've got a fourth down and goal to go. We just saw a good look at the incompletion. Peterson. Got it. Touchdown, YSU. So Darius Peterson gets in for the score. And you see some of the YSU players getting pumped up, and they deserve that because you know some of these guys, they practice hard all week. And these guys, you know, this is McNeese State's backups, a lot of their backups. But they're no slouches. It's backups versus backups, and you got to give them a lot of credit. They look pretty good on this drive. You know, this is this is the future YSU football squad. And for the Penguins, their second rushing touchdown of the night, first of the season for Peterson, fifth for the Penguins as a team this year. You know, the thing is, they need to start balancing that out with a passing attack because YSU's so. only scored one touchdown through the air this season. 113 still left to play. They are attending to an injured player for McNeese. Now we talked about the YSU students who have helped us out during the course of tonight's game. We also want to thank the guys who get paid just a little bit more. Maybe not as much as they're worth, but 
Mike Roscoe, who gets overpaid to do this, is our director. Technical director Bill Ballette doesn't get paid enough, but that's why he lives in Letonia. Assistant oh. director Jonathan Jackson, one of our YSU compadres, helping those two guys out. On audio, Tim Labrie. They finally dragged him out of the studio. It's not like he deserves to be out, but they let him out. Mike Garland, once again, handling all the graphics. Any misspellings, email Mike. The camera guys, what an outstanding job. Jim Bradley, Missy Kohut, Rodney McNinch, and John Scalota brought you all the pictures tonight. Not to mention our color analyst, Todd Kolar, the president of North Lima. <laughs> Sideline reporter Melissa Mack tonight, our statistician, Carl Schmidt. I only had to correct my father three times tonight. That's not bad. Our production package, which you saw at halftime, brought to you by Diana Colangelo, J.P. Robles, Zachary White. And the show open, produced by Carrie Kimmerer. And let's not forget the man up here with us as well who coordinated this whole show from the booth, Jason Vinkler. And that's Roger Royal limping off the field. See, that's why you do not want your starters exactly. in there. I mean, you want to preserve that 21-point lead because it'll, it'll have some impact on the polls when they vote, but not at the cost of your, your starting linebacker. Why is you look over two? And Royal has a touchdown interception return. He might be up for another player of the week honor. Toss sweep, why is you going for two? Peterson, though, will be slammed to the ground at the five-yard line. The conversion attempt will fail. And the score remains McNeese 28, YSU 13, with 113 left to play. Now, stay tuned because immediately at the end of the game, Melissa will talk to the coach, John Haycock. I'm sure she'll ask him about the play of the defense. That's to be commended. Definitely. But I'd like to hear his overview as far as what he feels transpired here tonight. So special teams in the offense faltering again. We get a look at YSU's uh, onside attempt. McNeese brings out their hands team. Well, the YSU scoring drive, though, impressive nonetheless. Nine plays, 87 yards. Darius Peterson capped it off with a two-yard gallop into the end zone. Try for two failed. And now Jake Stewart will attempt the onside kick. Jake Stewart to kick off for the Penguins. It'll be fielded by Luke Lawton, number 44 for McNeese. He didn't let it go the proper 10 yards. But doesn't matter, McNeese will grab the ball at the 43, and they will take over. I wonder if YSU was offsides. That's exactly what it was. Penguins were offsides, going for the onside attempt. But since Lawton recovered it, McNeese will take over. 112 left, YSU has just one timeout left. Here's a look at the onside attempt again. Looked like Stewart was going to get a decent bounce, but it went right to Lawton eventually. Might be a little tricky on this new sprint turf also. I don't know how many times they practice that. but Yeah, it has a little more give to it. Exactly. You might not get that quick hop yeah, off the ground like softer. you used to on the Astro turf that was here for 10 years. So McNeese will take a knee, and they may have to do that just uh, two more times. At the 45-yard line, second down. Well, you can watch Fox 1762 for YSU Penguins football. When they travel to Southwest Missouri on Saturday, September 28th, you can watch all the action live at 2.30 here on Fox 1762. Then Indiana State will take on YSU Saturday, October 5th at 10.30 here on Fox 1762. Your season for YSU football. A fumbled snap on the play. Quickly recovered, however, by the third string quarterback for the Cowboys, Ryan Corcoran. And that'll be the final play. They have not started the play clock, and we're already down to 15 seconds to go. So McNeese will not need to snap the ball, and they will head back to Lake Charles, Louisiana. 
with a 28 to 13 victory. They will even this overall series between the two schools at two games apiece. YSU having won here in 1994, losing in Lake Charles in, in Lake 95. Charles. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember that. That was rough, you lost 31 to three. That was very rough. Come back in 97, win the national championship 10-9, and then lose tonight. The final, McNeese State 28, YSU 13. And Todd, we talked about this after Clarion last week. You had plenty of things to work on and improve upon. The only bonus is last time that the Penguins stepped off the field, they had a win to go with some of their room for improvement. Now, at one and one on the season, they can ill afford another performance that will lead to a loss heading into the gateway. Yeah, last week, like uh, Coach Haycock say, um, I think Todd lost his train of thought. I did, you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, I know when he, when he did talk to us during the Tuesday luncheon, you know, he said it's still a win. It's still a win. It's still a win. Okay, you know, everybody okay, was yeah. down on the Penguins because of the performance against Clarion. It's still a win. Well, tonight it's not a win. And now he's going to hustle over to Melissa Mack, and we'll hook up with him in just a second to hear what Coach Haycock has to say about his team's performance here tonight in a battle between two top ten teams in Division One AA. So Coach Haycock graciously joining our very own Melissa Mack. Let's send it down to the sidelines. Mm -hmm. Melissa? Yeah, Coach, it was a tough loss. Uh, how do you feel you did overall? Well, you know, I think the big thing is, is, you know, we talked about this being a, a playoff type team at this time of the year, and McNeese is. They're playing at playoff speed right now. They've got a veteran team, and I think the reality is that we're not yet. And, uh, you know, we've got two weeks before our um, uh, league opener at Western Kentucky, and we're going to have to get a ton better. We've got to find some things that we can do and, and uh, sort them out. We've got to do it fast. But, uh, you know, that's a playoff caliber team in game two, and we're not there yet. Well, you do have a bye next week. How do you plan to prepare for your first away game? Well, we've got to take care of ourselves. We've got to find some things that we can do and have some success. Uh, you know, we've got some offensive things to square away. We've got a few defensive things to get squared away. Special teams has got it needs a lot of work. Uh, but again, we're, you know, we just found out reality-wise where we are, and we've got work to do. Thanks, okay. Coach. Okay, Rob. Well, that's what the coach has to say. Back to you. Thanks, Melissa. Obviously, a little hoarse tonight. Yeah, well, I think he's been doing some yelling. Been yeah, I regained my train of thought. I remember Coach Haycock saying. Uh, when we're looking back on the on the win last week, um, you're never as good as you think you are, but you're also never as bad as you think you are, and that's the the, the view that they took on that win. Mm -hmm. um, there were some good things and some bad things. Um, this week they were hoping to come back and improve on on the mistakes they did make and, and come in here, and unfortunately they had to face a tough McNeese State football team, and and it now.